Hey y'all, Scott here. I've been staring at this all day, I still don't get it. Anime! Couldn't even finish that word. See, for somebody so into stupid Nintendo games, I definitely need some boundaries set. There's a reason that sign's on my bedroom door. I refuse to consume much entertainment outside of the bare necessities, which is why I'm disgusted by the fact that people like things I don't like. I mean, what the hell is this? People who haven't played Pikmin 3? Maybe... I'm wrong. Maybe I need to broaden my horizons a bit, try new things, and maybe then I'll never have to give the excuse that I'm not an RPG guy ever again! Then, and only then, will I be able to play Fling Smash with a clear conscience. Never been able to do that before. I've been missing out on so many different types of entertainment in this world! Let's start out by trying This Is Gonna Sting. Go watch it Well, I know I'm not alone. Many others refuse to consume this. Looking it up online, this guy says it's because all anime is absurd and makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, because American animation is logic-based. It's a fucking sponge! Anime just holds a certain kind of stigma. A lot of it can be illogical and hard to follow, characters can be weird and annoying, a lot of anime doesn't pass the do you immediately turn the TV off when somebody walks in test. Now I don't dislike foreign cartoons or anything, some of my favorite series were made in Arizona. It's just, ever since I was a kid, this style never appealed to me. And as I grow older, whenever I get a whiff of anime most of the time, I utter those sweet, sweet words. What the f*** was that? But just because I don't like the anime style doesn't mean I don't like Japan. Are you kidding me? Japan is one of the most amazing countries out there. They made Wario. You may say, well, Scott, instead of playing games based on anime you've never seen, why not watch the anime the games are based on first? <laughs> Last time I tried to watch anime, I looked up how to and they just told me to stop, so I think this is the only way I can. I mean, after Mighty Number no. 9 denounced anime fans in its trailer, I knew there was no way I was ever gonna watch some. I always listen to what Mighty Number no. 9 has to say. And make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night. Yeah, Mighty Number no. 9's bitch. There's a reason it comes with a name tag. Don't tell Mighty Number no. 9, but I've officially converted my entire living space to be pro all things anime. I even have a jersey and everything. So now I just have to figure out what anime games I should buy. After searching for some on QVC, I am at a loss. All right, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelists of the Roses. That's the name of my florist. I don't have as many questions as I thought I would. How do you even properly say this title? Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Ah, oh, damn it, Dr. Jero's name is copyrighted? Run. Yeah, this is pretty much the exact same damn thing. Can Piccolo survive? <laughs> No. Well, here we have Tokyo School Life, a visual novel. These types of visual novels are like books if Scholastic was really horny. It's a good thing that girl's moving in this scene. I left this game on for nine days and the image only partially burned into the screen. Moving the right stick fast forwards through everything so we can cruise through this entire thing. Uh, don't worry, sound effects are still included. Did I snap her neck? Well, we sort of still get a good idea of what's going on this way. I said sorta. Next up is Senren Kagura Reflections, so I have to help this girl search herself. I found a gun. I was right about anime. I don't need anything new in my life. I don't care about anime. It's weird. I don't like it. Oh, hey, cool portal. Oh, God, lines. You've done it now. You've really done it. You think you can get away with not giving a shit about anime? Oh, no, I'm starting to question my ability to. It's human nature to give a shit about anime. And you, my friend, are the only one to reject it. Really? The only one I've noticed. And because of that, you will be. Who even are you? I am the protector of all things anime. I am the guardian of virginity. I am Dr. Anna May. Now please so. Well, I think various animes are completely acceptable and wonderful pieces of art and entertainment, but I'm just not interested or invested in any particular anime or anime in general. I find that hard to believe. Damn, you're right. Oh, so that's what we're doing now, huh? Well, prepare for my secret weapon. Humility. All things anime. I'm sorry. I just never grew up with you. I never understood you. But that doesn't mean I don't respect you. I can really use some help right now. Please. I'll just finish you off myself. I'm sick of people like you disrespecting my world! It's time to succumb to your doom! You should be 
because people aren't into something doesn't make them not respected. I still don't know what the hell Fire Emblem means. And my respect for anime has given me power. And I know exactly what will get anybody into anime to back off. Hey y'all, Scott here. Valentine's Day? I'm ready. I've had the exact same holiday tradition since 2003. A bottle of wine and body spray. Now that I'm 22, I'm looking to spice things up a bit. That's right, I'm gonna successfully get laid with a Wii game, which oddly enough... It's harder than I thought. This right here is the Nintendo Wii. It had a little something for everybody. Everybody. Because of the varied audience that we captured, we got pretty much every type of game you could possibly imagine on this console. Fortune Street and the rest of them. I mean, the Wii had mature first-person shooters, exercise games, dancing games, platformers, role-playing games, f games, Sonic. I only have the Wii version here. I assume it includes all the sex it can. The PlayStation 3 version requires some peripherals, according to the cover. You'll need these. Hell yeah, you will. <laughs> Let's not waste any more time. We are officially one disc slot away from me taking my innocence and just... Ah! What do I have to lose other than virginity? Let's play We Dare. Why? Looking at the screenshots, it looks like it's just a sexy WarioWare. So WarioWare. There's not a ton of ways to truly make the character look like yourself. Unless you're the cat in the hat. Weirdly enough, lots of options if you look like that. After creating something God Wishy created, we have to pick one of six personality types. Are we a big shot, some couch potato, yes, a jock? I created some other characters here, including a girl I named her Impact because I always had a thing for that font. Such a great font. So bold, so fun, always using when you want attention. I always wished I'd find somebody who was just as iconic as Impact. Yeah, okay, I want to fuck a font. Who doesn't? And it's time for the mini game. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what this whole sex thing is all about. Did I miss a page? These minigames can be pretty intimate, squeezing your faces together with a Wii remote between them, just another Wednesday. Eating the apple by hitting buttons with your face can get really competitive playing with the guys. Fuck you. Fuck you. In the spanking game, where you have to put the Wii remote in your friend's back pocket and then r rock them back and forth? Where's the spanking game? That was 20% of why I bought it. But thankfully, the stripping minigame is still here. That was 40%. Gotta stand on the weed balance board. It'll weigh you and you have to take off as many clothes as you can and it'll detect if you did or not because technically you're supposed to weigh less. I have a workaround though. Hold melon before, put it away after, easy high score. Got an entire cupboard for my weed dare accessories. And to my knowledge, you can't spank in this game. It shows it on the back of the box. Ubisoft, thank God they have a support number to call. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Apparently, Weed Dare is considered contraband if played outside of Europe or Australia. If there's a sexier reason to go to prison, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> prison was okay. Met this guy Jerry, had few laughs, Palm got stabbed, but being the only person to go to prison for Weed Dare makes me the most qualified person to have an opinion on Weed Dare. And my opinion on Weed Dare is that it needs to learn a certain definition. Lifting isn't spanking! Hey y'all, Scott here. I hate rumors. Ever since the dawn of time, they've been used to spoil major reveals. And ever since, they've been primarily used to get the attention of Nintendo fans, such as this one. Nintendo's lineup for 2021. This one's fake. This is an eye exam. So let's see what system we'll be scouring. Damn it. Awada himself made further statements on the interview, asking if better graphics and motion sensing would be enough to sell a DS successor. You can't just have better graphics and more controls, you need something else. Sex appeal! As 2010 made its way through the door, rumors persisted about the next DS, one guy deciding to snoop around the Game Developers Conference that year to find as much info as he could. His findings? I'll take anything at this point. Basically, he discovered the system was going to be more powerful than the Nintendo DS. Shut the f up? But I mean, why would Nintendo announce a DS2? It was early 2010, they were just about to release a brand new DS revision, the TSI XL. I don't get you. On March 23rd, 2010, Nintendo officially announced a successor to the Nintendo DS. It wasn't called the Nintendo DS2, it was the Nintendo 3DS. I made this shirt for nothing? Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the show for people looking for meaning in their life. You just have to look. 
really hard. We here at Critique That Leak take our leak critiquer titles very seriously. It's not every day somebody goes to the effort of opening up Photoshop, so we really have to embrace each and every leak we can. Who has <laughs> time to erase one word from a Zelda logo? During 2017 to 2018, there were some rumors floating around about a Link's Awakening remake heading to the Nintendo 3DS. Now, that ended up being for the Nintendo Switch, and while I do believe that remake probably started life on the 3DS, this isn't it. This guy decided to be clever and lazy. See, the title of The Legend of Zelda Awakening follows the format of another Game Boy remake on 3DS, Metroid Samus Returns. I take the original title and shake the words up a bit for the remake. The problem is Nintendo wouldn't use the original Zelda logo from the 90s with no real alterations for a new release of theirs, even if it is for a remake. However, I will put this leak up on the wall to remind me no matter how lazy I am, I could be lazier. I believe this thing was made just to shut people up about the 3DS needing a second stick because when it came out, that's all you can really say about it. It came out, it was barely supported, and nobody bought it. In one sec, I know some people bought it, you don't have to tell me. Scott, I bought the Circle Pad Pro, I go to bed with it every night. Nikkei reported that Nintendo was set to reveal a 3DS with a bigger screen similar to the Nintendo DS iXL at E3 2012. This was accompanied by Wii U pricing info, and Nintendo said it, these rumors were false. This is Nintendo 3DS XL. What the hell happened there? Steel Diver Sub Wars was ousted through these means alongside NES Remix for the Wii U. The sequel to Steel Diver was leaked through the Australian classification website. Now, I don't usually get pissed about things leaking. This was an exception. But everything we've talked about has led to this. See, when Yoshi's New Island was coming out, a certain listing popped up online detailing a special edition Yoshi 3DS XL. This spread like wildfire and showed off an image of the system. And he said, it was hideous. It was also made by a 16 year old scout. Yeah, I got bored one day in July of 2013 and decided to make a mock-up for a special edition 3DS box. The core idea here was to just make a box for the system. I wanted to try and mimic the design of something like the Animal Crossing 3DS box. The 3DS design itself was an afterthought. I effectively gave a 3DS liver spots. And then IGN reported on this thing, and so did a lot of other sites. I felt really proud about that one. The reason my fan art was used was because a Yoshi 3DS was actually coming out, and one of these retailers just decided to Google Yoshi 3DS and uploaded the worst looking one they could find. To commemorate the experience, I recently bought the actual 3DS this listing was for. We are not enough green spots on this one, but it's still okay. With it being a home console handheld hybrid, many brought into question the 3DS's future. Will Nintendo continue to support the 3DS or immediately move on to the Switch? Turns out, this thing wouldn't die. The successor definitely ended up being the Nintendo Switch Lite, a handheld only variant of the Nintendo Switch. But was that what these rumors were referring to? My shoulders are gonna work overtime on this one. Before the new 3DS XL was announced for North America, this banner came into GameStop and leaked online. I wonder what it could mean. In April of 2014, Nintendo trademarked the title Codename Steam, Strike Team Eliminating the Alien Menace. Nobody knew what it meant, but it wasn't until E3 2014 that Nintendo hosted a dedicated conference to announce Codename Steam for the 3DS. And fun fact, did you know Codename Steam released? You know what? After going through all that, I think I might have changed my mind on rumors. They can be pretty fun. From this day forward, I will only believe rumors. And if those rumors ever become facts, f them. Hey all, Scott here. Well, I've done it. I've finally mastered the art of beating video games, all thanks to cheating. Now that I've got that out of the way, I'm gonna use my newfound knowledge to beat games under different circumstances. I've been working on my chili run lately. Every time I hit a button, I have to eat five spoonfuls of chili. I'm not even past the menu! I've gotten lost in my fair share of games, whether I have no idea where I should be going, no idea what my next objective is, I just simply didn't understand the directions given to me, I can't find anything. Video games are easily the quickest way to realize I'm an idiot. I remember playing Bioshock Infinite in 2013. You could activate an arrow showing you where to go by hitting up. After one playthrough, this controller is useless now. But that's just not gonna happen. Everybody makes mistakes, just look at everybody. I don't wanna be told the solution to the puzzle, I gotta figure it out myself. I'm no pussy, I'll beat this game with my eyes closed. I am completely lost. And it feels amazing to be on a winning streak to constantly figure out solutions with no hesitation and then you get to that stupid part in Uncharted 3. What the hell do I do here? That's when I usually call it quits and just look up a guide when the rest of the game is like this and then I'm stuck trying to figure out this part for like three hours. Oh yeah, wow, I can't figure out this puzzle in Resident Evil 2. I want to piss my pants, not think critically. But for people who just need answers and they need them now, crack out the thesaurus. The strategy guide is the thesaurus of video games. I have said that so many times today. Yeah, I'd like the definition of sex in the 80s, please. How to Win at Nintendo Games was one of the most popular books for NES players, but it's nothing special nowadays. Just a simple book full of strategies and tips. It's simply all about mastering the games that can't be beat.
This book has a chapter about Mickey Mouse Capade. If you come up and tell me Wii Play was bundled with a Wii Remote, like, yeah, I know that, but I'm gonna eat it up anyways because I'm a sucker for video game information. Or I have short term memory loss. Magazines started to shift over more to news and reviews, and the tips and tricks portions became its own product with the strategy guide. No problem, I'd love to spend a couple of bucks on a guidebook for my favorite games. What the f is that? I mean, I've stopped playing my fair share of games for a while, and a couple weeks later, when I come back, what the hell happened when I was gone? I love game walkthrough videos, I know exactly what I want to hear. What's up guys, it's me GameFan Mike here, and today I'm going to show you how to get through the entirety of the first level in Super Mario Brothers. It's really easy, it's really simple, and I'm going to show you real quick. This is a classic game, one of my all-time favorites, and I'm going to show you how to get from point A to point B. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a like, a thumbs up, a nod, really. Any form of respect you can give, I'll take it. You are what's helping me grow and make helping you all out with games my full-blown career. All right, ran out of time there. We'll start over on the next life. Just a reminder, guys, before we get to the meat of this, if you haven't yet, please follow me on Twitter. When these things finally, finally bite the dust entirely, I won't ever forget them. I don't think I'll go the rest of my life without remembering. Oh shit, remember strategy guides? Hey all, Scott here. It's amazing to me that the Nintendo Switch is already three years old and they still haven't fixed the console's biggest issue. The T is backwards. Remember March 2019? The month Yoshi's Crafted World came out? Oh! They also released Resident Evil 1 and 0 at retail for $60. Oh! And 1 isn't even on the cartridge, you have to download it. This one's just all right. Nobody goes, oh man, you've never played Banana Blitz? You've got to try Banana Blitz. It's just okay. Well, the Nintendo Switch revision came out this month, and only a stupid, dumb, stupid idiot would buy one when they already have a perfectly fine Switch from launch. Aha! I'm also not really one to freak out and adore every single thing Nintendo does, but I'm willing to give it a try. What the f Box Boy? What the f The Stretchers? What the f the Switch still exists? Hey all, Scott here. I bought new clothes. That's why they always call me New Clothes Scott. I love designs like this so much. I should go as far as possible with that love. What kind of tattoo you want, Clad? Could have just gotten the Xbox controller. It's a brand new day. I wake up and what do I do? I buy more useless trash. If I run out of money, I'll just sell another kidney. I don't care. Look, I bought another rice cooker for the collection. But we all have those things we really don't need, but sort of kind of want anyways. And game companies know this. That's why they all say, grab the paint. Scott's a moron. I'm not as ashamed as I want it to be. But here's the thing. Controllers are absolutely abused. These things are put through so much, and if you play games, you know you're prone to some thumb grease. To buy a controller based on its looks alone and with it only being available for a limited time, I almost don't want to use it. I know if I do, it's more susceptible to wear and tear, and if it breaks down, I don't want to buy another one. By the time I have to do that, it's going to be ten times more expensive online. Have you seen the Cheeto market? People pay top dollar for special trash. Imagine how much I have to pay for a new Halo Reach controller. Who chews on thumbsticks? Special edition controllers. They're always a joy to see, plus you can usually warn picking these up because you can never have too many controllers. However, I never want anything to ever happen to these. They're too precious. That's why I don't have anybody over anymore. Yeah, so I kind of have this weird thing where I have to lick every controller that I see. <gasps> Donkey Kong! You have the one guy that notoriously doesn't bathe his fingers go, yeah, I'll take the gold one. Like, what the f***? Don't do that to my controller! People have been customizing their controllers ever since the dawn of time, and if you want to reach a bit, we could consider decals to be the first instance of the special edition. I think a lot of people have seen these Nintendo Power decals for NES controllers. You'd get them with the magazine and just stick them onto your gamepad. These things have always been a thing, still prevalent nowadays. These are the cheapest possible solution to give your controller some flair. The only one I technically have is the controller skin that came with the Sonic Forces bonus edition. Choking hazard? <laughs> Thank god I read that. But they made sure to include denim. I know what you're thinking. I love the GameCube. Like, see, I enjoy this, but I just want more. I think I found another choking hazard. But hey, this one's greaseproof, a controller that addresses the biggest gaming hurdle. See, I want to play Halo, but I just love No Fork Spaghetti. Yeah, I really do like these controllers. They look great, they look cool, but controllers are meant to be used, and I can't use these controllers without ever feeling guilty. They're too rare and valuable. On the other hand, special edition consoles look cool, but they also make much less sense to buy if you already have the console, though the design will hold up for much longer. So, I've come to the conclusion that I won't buy anything ever. I'm not doing it. So, tell me where it all began. All right. Hi, 
My name is Scott, and I'm not an alcoholic. My name isn't Scott, and this isn't an AA meeting. Oh, thank God. I always hated those. I always felt out of place. I wish they would make it more accessible to non-alcoholics. You're stalling. I'm sitting. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. I'm paying you. With a coupon! You don't know what it's like to go to therapy. Hey, I got a life outside of this job. I go to therapy twice a week. You're a therapist. Where do you go to therapy? The mirror. All right, fine. It all started at my desk. Hey y'all, Scott here. So is this the first time you introduce yourself like that, or is this a reoccurring thing? Pretty much every week. Say, do you want me to play three of Nintendo's worst games of all time to end up wasting thousands of dollars in therapy? That was some incredible foresight. I play my year ahead of time. Picture this. Making bad games. It's like making bad water. It's almost impossible. One of these companies is Nintendo, a developer and publisher widely believed to put out nothing but quality titles. I finally figured out what this statement is. There were three games released in 2015, I believe to be nearly irredeemable. Some of the biggest mistakes Nintendo's ever made. Games I consider to make up the dark age of Nintendo. Big deal. That is the best thing a therapist could say to me. You shouldn't let the products of a multi-billion dollar children's company affect your mental health. You don't understand. I have to play most Luigi-based products. Well, I think it's a good time to practice anything but sobriety, so let's take a look at three of Nintendo's worst games of all time, which, weirdly enough, all released within two months of each other. First one we should tackle is... Ah! Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. The Rise of the Machines. Touch an amiibo. Ah! Nintendo's E3 2015 digital event kicked off. Halfway through, a happy home designer trailer played, then those glorious words world premiere flew up on screen. It cuts to a Wii U gamepad. Holy sh**. And an Animal Crossing figure gets scanned onto it. Holy sh**. Animal Crossing's on Wii U. I called it. I called it. So you, you got incredibly depressed over the announcement of a game in a series that you aren't even a huge fan of to begin with in the first place. That's right. Who the f*** is this guy?! So opening these up, I got Shirtwolf, Spunkrat, Unemployed Mouse, Insomnia Duck, Better Than Me Gazelle, Bride of an Aardvark, Self-Conscious Dog, Ye Old Lion, Hair Duck, Sex Frog, Kyle, and Mammal. Well, I couldn't possibly play Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival by myself. What do I look like, a f***ing loser? I at least need to play Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival with one other person. Oh, f no, f no, I'm not playing it, no, no! I'm telling the story in past tense. I am forwarding this message to everybody in my contacts list. If you stop by tonight, we can play... Gex. Oh. <gasps> Did not take you as a Gex fan. I'm not. I know you were lying, and I'll do anything not Gex related. Even Amiibo Festival? Yeah. Is it Gex Night? I've been waiting for this for years. Yeah. Oh, I love Gex! We get the rules explained to us, and this is gonna take an hour and a half to finish. Do we really have enough stamina to last that long? I haven't eaten since yesterday, two weeks ago. Yeah, and I know Gex, an hour and a half is really lowballing it. Okay, we'll buy some food. Alright, what do you guys want? I only have enough money for one thing we can all share. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I'm starving. I couldn't care less right now. Alright. I, uh, I'll, I'll take one corn dog. You went to Sonic? Not just that, I ate there. You should've came sooner. So when you have some players to play a real-life video game with, before you start a game, you need to make sure you and your team are nourished. This is gonna take a whole lot of effort and time, and the last thing you want anybody to do during a game of Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival is leave to do something else. Animal Crossing Quiz Show, the perfect game to play with people who don't know Animal Crossing all too well. What is this? <laughs> Hey y'all, Scott here. I like candles. Sue me. I should stop ending sentences with that. But I like them. They're fun, and I just bought all these from the store on clearance. They must be clearing the shelves for even more candles. And I'm sure somebody new will make them. What the hell is this? We got the Sly Cooper Trilogy on PlayStation 2, a beloved set of stealth platformers developed by Sucker Punch. Now, I have no nostalgia for these titles, as I was too invested in... Hey y'all, Scott here. I have hobbies. I'm only human. I like talking harshly about Mario Kart 7, being somewhat critical of Mario Kart 7, negatively speaking about Mario Kart 7, hiking, f***ing despising Mario Kart 7. I kinda want there to be a balance between f*** this f***ing sh**, f*** 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 
rock, and this is a little too easy. Wiggler, ever wanted to drive as a caterpillar? Don't lie. I mean, I don't need Waluigi. He's not sheltered. Well, let's hop into the first cup. And... It's f***ing Mario Kart again! Overall, I'd say the items in 7 were pretty underwhelming. However, it turns out that movement I was a part of in 2011 actually accomplished something. I don't even care about the coins, I just had a free year. But hey, don't take my word for it. Dear God, don't. It's probably wrong. Hey all, Scott here. Look at this. It's my integrity. I will do anything for money. The statement still stands! Well, doing anything for money covers pretty much everything for money, except for... My soul? I was looking to lose a few pounds anyway, so I just need to find somebody who's willing to buy it from me. There we go, just listed one soul on Craigslist. We have a buyer! Welcome! F I spelt soup. I'm gonna have to live with integrity for the rest of my life if I don't do something about it. I can't live with myself knowing I can live with myself. Alright, Raid Shadow Legends downloaded! I've never heard anybody say anything about this game that wasn't pure bullshit they were paid to say. I'm so excited to see why I never wanted to play this! This is the best mobile RPG of the year! What am I looking at here? The Bill of Rights? I swear, all mobile games are the same. You need a magnifying glass to read anything, and it's never obvious what you're supposed to click. Uh... This one. Well, we're this far in, and I'm still not sure what the title means. This is the kind of title that's so vague it can work across every single living product. It's either Latin, or I can play further to find out what significancy it has. It's Latin. Well, that's enough Rage Shadow Legends for me today. I'm off to go to my Vimeo account now that I've contaminated it with talking about the best RPG mobile game of the year to see if Plarian wants to sponsor me. Wait, if the entire point of them sponsoring everybody about this game was to just get the word out about it, I did exactly what they wanted me to do without even getting paid for it. Even if I reiterate this is just some garbage generic RPG mobile game I don't give a piss about, I don't find it fun at all, haha, it doesn't matter! They just want the word Shadow Raid and Legends to be everywhere. They already won! Bad publicity, good publicity, they don't care. I lost my soul talking about this game, and I didn't even get paid for it. Now, I may have lost my pride, but I can always buy that back. What I'm really worried about is my Vimeo presence. The idea people will look at me as the guy who willingly talked about Raid Shadow Legends without getting paid, do I look like I stooped that low? What if I want to branch out on Vimeo and talk about my stupid Nintendo games? My opinions and views may be undermined by the fact that I was trying to lure in a company by advertising and talking positively about their product. Why would anybody trust my opinion when I would have been that easily bought out? And if I did get the sponsorship, why would anybody respect my opinions on stupid Nintendo games if I openly got paid for a sh mobile game I wouldn't have talked about otherwise? I think I like having a soul. I'm glad I didn't go through with a sponsorship. I may have tried, but I learned my lesson. I am officially the most prideful user on Vimeo. Yes, this is Scott Man Fun from Vimeo. Ziploc's fucking great! Hey all, Scott here. Holding a gobble. It's Wednesday, all right. You know, it's moments like this that really makes me appreciate collecting video games. Like, where would I be without that? Hey all, Scott here. Where the fuck is Gubble? I can tell you back in 2013, I never expected in a million years I would have owned Glover. Look at me now. Back in the day, I was petrified at the thought of telling people I even knew what the word Nintendo was. I didn't want people knowing I was a Now I'll gladly tell you about Mario and Wario on the Super Famicom, I don't care. It used to be pretty difficult for me to express myself about my interests back then. I had this feeling that people would look down on me for knowing so much about video games. I don't want to look like a loser in high school. I'll wear Nike socks and use Axe body spray, damn it, I'm cool, I swear! Now who the cares, it doesn't matter, look at me, do I look like I don't do this? And my collection wouldn't be complete without personal trainer walking, wanna know how much I paid for it? You know, it's rude to ask people what their salary is. Cause I personally don't want to get to the point where I know the difference between plastic seals on video games, but if we're gonna go through the basics, we have to know. This is how you get on a list. Game collecting's a fun hobby to get into, and I really hope I inspired somebody out there who's lonely to become lonely and in debt. Now I think the only thing left to do is to go through my favorite things in the collection. The Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Special Edition. This is a nice fat little box. I love adjectives in this too. The entirety of my Wii U collection. I have one of the last major releases being Axiom Verge and some of the more rare games like Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, Wii Sports Club, and of course Hello Kitty Cruisers. Fun fact! This game is bad. Hey all, Scott here. I think I've reached a critical point in my life recently. I feel like I have to actually get up and do something rather than just piss around talking about the Game Boy Color or whatever. So, this is it. I need to decide. Do I get up and contribute to society or do I talk about the Game Boy Color? Yes, finally, I can experience the Game Boy in color. 
This is the original Game Boy released in 1989. It obviously released that year, there was no way you could miss it. The Game Boy Color had hundreds of games that only worked on the Game Boy Color. Definitely more than a lot of other systems that were considered their own thing. So. I don't care. The Game Boy Color, to me, will always be the first true successor to the original handheld. It's its own system. If I defend a game system this much, do you think it will notice? So to quote any parent who picks this up, what the f is this? But then we have the games that are apparently too good to be seen on the original Game Boy models. These have distinct Game Boy Color logos on the cartridges, are translucent, and have convex tops. Easiest way to put it, the original Game Boy cartridges you could use as pill organizers. Game Boy Color, not so much. The Game Boy Color has a weird library, and I think the launch titles are indicative of that. I know I said how I consider it to be its own system, but so many of the titles that are labeled as Game Boy Color games are just Game Boy games that display in color when you pop them in the system. But there were still tons of games that were exclusive to the Game Boy Color that took advantage of the better hardware. But it just so happened around the time the Color released, Nintendo got really weird with what they considered publishing worthy. I would scream if they ever decided to publish a game called Little Mermaid 2 Pinball Frenzy. And Nintendo didn't do a ton of huge first party stuff on this machine, but they published damn near anything they could. Quest for Camelot? Go for it. Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 3? Why not? Beauty and the Beast, a board game and adventure? F it. Ham Taro, Ham Hams Unite? I've heard worse. Little Mermaid 2 Pinball Frenzy? I may have been wrong about this thing. This system isn't nearly as in depth as I thought it was. A lot of the games that were labeled as Game Boy Color titles were just Game Boy games with colors programmed into them. Even Nintendo's support on this thing was really weird and lackluster. We got a few original Zeldas, uh, some ports and remakes, Mario Sports titles, and enhanced Pokemon. That's basically it. But still, original Zeldas and a Pokemon. Those are huge games for Nintendo to just put them on a simple upgraded Game Boy if it was only a simple upgraded Game Boy. What the f was this thing? An excuse for me to waste 17 minutes. A Nintendo Wii, one of the best-selling consoles of all time. Its mission? Appeal to people outside of the gaming crowd with games and controllers that were simple and intuitive. First everybody, then the world. The Wii was a success due to how simple it was. So why was there so much sh you could buy for it? Oh my god, it's a Wii owner! Sir, would you buy any of this? Oh, I'll buy f***ing anything. But we can't just stop at the liability wand. We can make this so much more realistic. We can put it in a wheel, put it in a gun, put it in a kid. You'd have to plug the nunchuck into this here port, which offered endless opportunities. So many other Wii controllers use this. There's never been this many possibilities with just one hole. And contrary to popular belief, the Wii remote wasn't perfect. It's okay, who cares about religion anyways? It may be just plastic, but that never stopped publishers from adding compatible with Wii Wheel to their game boxes. Oh yes, it's compatible with the Wii Wheel. Is it also compatible with the concept of love? See, the concept behind Wii Speak was great at the time. You wouldn't have to wear headphones with a mic, no wires, just talk to your TV and hear your friends talk back. It felt like a very Wii way to do voice chat. The problem was that microphone was right next to your TV's speakers, so while it would pick up your voice, it would also pick up the game's audio and your friend's voice and their game's audio nonstop echoing, so it was just my favorite definition of not good. They may have said it was designed to mute the game audio or echoes, but this is the same company who said, let's make the Wii Speak. You can download the Wii Speak channel alongside it, coming in December. It doesn't work anymore, but it would allow you to chat with your friends. This was pretty much the extent of Wii Speak's use. It was compatible with a few other games, whether it was for online voice chat or just to give certain games microphone support. A Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy let you record victory and defeat catchphrases while also letting you speak your answers. It works about as good as I'd say it does. It doesn't. But hey, the Wii Speak is worth it for recording victory and defeat sounds in Wheel of Fortune alone. Got it. Nintendo wanted to do even more health-related jargon on the console, which brings us to the Wii Vitality Sensor. It released! Gotcha! At E3 2009, Nintendo fans' worst nightmare was revealed. So here's the thing, for what it is, you draw functions fine enough, it does in fact work, but not well enough for Wacom to grit their teeth. Left-handed people are a f***ing sin to you draw. This tablet was obviously designed with righties in mind. You use the Wii Remote buttons to control certain elements, while the stylus is on the right-hand side of the device, attached by a cord shorter than the list of Wii Speak compatible games. The included software is just a simple art program. There's loads of things to do here, like boot it up, draw a horse, the possibilities are endless. You can also play Pictionary. Guess what word I'm drawing? That's right, arrows. All right, it's time to shoot whatever comes up. 
Babysitting Mama, a spin-off of Cooking Mama. This one's all about not shaking the baby. We have this plush doll we slide our Wii remote in and then we plug a nunchuck into the baby's back. Portable video games, allowing you to play games in inappropriate situations. They make loitering a whole lot less obvious and give you something to do at funerals. Thank God for their existence. What would I do on the bus without them? Human sh**? No, they didn't make Wario Land 4 for me to talk to people, I have to play it. Portable electronic game devices started appearing by the mid-70s with stuff like Mattel Auto Race. Every timeline starts with Mattel Auto Race. Prior to the mid-60s, Nintendo was primarily into... Blank cards it is. In 1975, they released EVR Race into arcades. I've spit games more iconic than that. Well, EVR Race might not have lit the world on fire, but that's okay. Nintendo followed it up with Shooting Trainer. We're overdue at this point. That's where Skyhawk comes into the picture. I would tell you the impact it left, but I got a letter from everybody. And with that, he would design the next video game product of Nintendo. Is its name? I don't really know what Nintendo would name Bread now. And that was until the next series, the multi-screen series. All right, first one to answer wins. What does this remind you of? A clam! And if we want to extend these plagiarism allegations even further, various DS games utilize the system on its side like a book. And what do we have here? You son of a bitch plagiarist, what if they notice? They sort of missed the point of the original Game & Watch units. They're so bulky and not nearly as classy as the other ones. You whip this out at a funeral, you're gonna be the life of the party. Of course, we got some Donkey Kong ones. Here I have Donkey Kong 2. What? This is the only game called Donkey Kong 2. Of course, the sequel to the original Donkey Kong was Donkey Kong Jr., and then they moved right on over to Donkey Kong 3. The Game & Watch game decided to cut the bullshit because this is by all accounts heavily inspired by Donkey Kong Jr. in the arcades. This is pretty much just a renamed version of Donkey Kong Jr. But they already made a Donkey Kong Jr. Game & Watch before this, what the hell is this thing? Hey all, Scott here. I've always wanted to be a remake, being a better version of my past self, maybe in HD or 3D. I always base my decisions off of what Crest does. But that of course means sacrifices are in order. I can't just go and remake the entirety of my life in 3D without the budget going through the roof. So, I have to start cutting content. Yes, a new game console. I can't wait to play the latest and greatest. Don't look at me. Every single piece of thing is people saying, man, things were better back then. World War II, f that, it's all about the classics. See, I recognize those three words, I should see that. Oh man, I recognize these words too, I should do this. But then you had Donkey Kong. Nice tagline. Like, by f it's Space Invaders on Super Nintendo. The original game came out in 1978, well now it's 1994, bitches. <laughs> I gotta check the calendar. See, I wish I popped in the Ratchet and Clank collection and had a cool menu with tons of extras and behind the scenes features. You know, scratch that, I want none of that. Oh my God, thank you, Sony. Which games are classified as which? Well, I'm glad you asked because welcome to a safety hazard. We have a lot of remakes, remasters, and re-releases to go through here. Which ones are remakes, which ones are remasters, which ones are re-releases, which ones are gonna fall? <laughs> We are really getting ahead of ourselves here. This is a compilation of Silent Hill 2 and 3 in HD. Good for it, but it's not good. This is a buggy, amateur-feeling remaster of these two games, but the studio who remastered them had to work with the code Konami gave them, which was unfinished. They didn't have the finalized code from the game, so they had to rebuild parts of it themselves. Does that make this a remake? I'll throw it in the Silent Hill HD collection pile to be safe. A Wii Sports Club, I think, is a remaster? I had to remake it for Wii Motion Plus. They're the exact same games, though. Silent Hill HD Collection. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on Xbox 360. This is lame. This is the mobile phone version on 360. It runs weird, and a lot of the user interface still looks like it was made for a touchscreen. Now, if you want to consider this as derivative of the mobile phone version, then it's a re-release. If you want to consider this as derivative of the original release, it's a remaster. Well, I think I'm finally ready to start the 3D remake of my life. Now that my cost has been cut, uh, I just want to see what my life warrants on the board. Son of a... Hey all, Scott here. What'll it be? Mario Party! This is a bar. Yes, all of these games were varying levels of good, but can you really blame anybody with a pulse for not buying a Wii U? Oh my god. Mario Kart 8 was the Wii U's big chance to redeem itself, the system's killer app. Up until its release, the console was just kinda And when Mario Kart 8 came out, the console went from to Contrary to what most will say, the launch was pretty solid in my opinion. There was quite a lot to play, and no games that made anybody other than the die-hard Nintendo fanboy who'll buy anything they released by the console. It's Mario. All right, let's be fair. An original 3D Mario was kind of what the Wii U needed to feel justified with its banana bolt controller. Surely a 3D Mario would take advantage of it. I mean, the Nintendo 64 controller was made with Mario 64 in mind. E3 2013 arrived.
I'm sad. And ever since, look at this thing. It did really well. Had a ton of wonderful games and kept getting game releases in 2019. My God. All seven Koopalings were going to be playable racers. Thank God. Honestly, this was a pretty neat announcement initially, but I think people realized how ridiculous this was when they saw the final character select screen. Like, imagine this is your brain. Jesus, man, seven tumors. Of course, something I look forward to with every Mario Kart game is the battle mode, which weirdly enough, Nintendo wasn't detailing at all with this game. We didn't know anything about it up until it's release, but you know, you can't really mess up battle mode that much. At its worst, it'll probably be like Mario Kart Wii again. And even then that was tolerable. It was just kind of not my favorite. So either way, let's take a look at the game that saved the Wii U. The game that justified the Wii U. The game. Heading into the menus. Well, I don't know what else I'm gonna do, but that's not all. We got two other new characters in the form of Baby Rosalina. Listen, as your resident Mario Galaxy player, that game had an entire backstory for Rosalina, and I will say Baby Rosalina makes no sense. No, Baby Luigi, that's fine. And of course, Pink Gold Peach. Well, let's get a move on to the tracks. We select the first cup, and... They finally changed the Mario Kart formula! Sweet Sweet Canyon is all about donuts in the sort. It's a wild track to describe that makes you look f***ing insane if you try to. The donuts! Everywhere! Was this game rushed? Obviously no, not my Mario Kart A. They put so much love and attention in every little detail with this game. This was probably an example of them going, No, we want this to make Mario Kart TV feel more like a sports broadcast thing. Either way, we have one more mode to check out, and that is Battle Mode! Battle mode has been a staple of the Mario Kart series ever since the very beginning, but it seemingly was getting less and less attention with each entry. And of course, with Mario Kart 8, Nintendo barely mentioned it until damn near 20 seconds after it released. Balloon Battle is all we got here, and... Wait, Moo Moo Meadows? That... That's a track. Oh... Oh my god. Wait, I'm not supposed to talk about this yet. Let's talk about the updates. I am a bit bummed out by the lack of things to do in the game outside of... Racing? Like basically, play the Grand Prix and play online, that's all you can really do. But when it comes down to it, Mario Kart 8 was the definitive Mario Kart experience at the time of its release. But they just had to f up the battle mode! So they didn't put any battle tracks in here, they just used existing ones. Okay, that's already lame, but they couldn't have even been bothered to alter the tracks just a bit to make them more suitable for battle mode. They're terrible! They're so big and designed to loop around, they aren't small closed in arenas like battle tracks should be! And out of all the tracks to choose, why Toad's Turnbike? Why Yoshi Valley? Why Toad Harbor? And when you die in battle mode, you come back as a ghost and can still hurt the other players. That's not fair. What the hell were they doing with this mode? It's ridiculous. I almost would have preferred if they just didn't bring the mode back, or at the very least, if they just remastered old battle stages and nothing more. That would have been okay. But no, instead, this is the worst mode in any Mario Kart game. And it used to be my favorite Nintendo. What is wrong with you? See, that should show you how bad this mode is. It made me break something. But I still did that out of anger towards Nintendo. Now, what the f am I doing? Hey, all, Scott here. I hate walls. Why do I live here? Have you ever realized there's a reason for these things to exist? That's right, you haven't, because there isn't any. But for some reason, the wall companies have a monopoly on console video games. It's just the reality we live in now, the way God intended. Super Nintendo cartridges must be played indoors. Yeah, that's right, God. You know what was the coolest thing ever? Playing a game in an environment you couldn't normally play that game in. This is f***ing incredible! Now, I don't own a Turbo Express because I spent all my money on not this, but I do have a second Nomad. Could you tell? So to play this on the go, we're gonna need a battery pack. Damn it. All right, I'll go inside just this once to try this thing out. After that, never again. Not being able to put a Sega Nomad in my pocket is my worst nightmare. This truly is a Sega Genesis on the go. It just can't attach any of the add-ons like the Sega CD or Sega 32X. I mean, who cares? What, was I really gonna play Fahrenheit on the go? Yeah. But what if we want a little more power with a lot less compromises? Well, say hello to the PS1 LCD monitor, a way to play your favorite PlayStation games on a portable LCD screen as long as you're connected 
one more trip inside and we can play our PS1 games portably. But I recall seeing all these screen cases for your Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 or Xbox One or PlayStation 4 where it's fundamentally a carrying case with a TV screen built inside. This way your child doesn't have to go, God forbid, a minute talking to people at grandma's. Definitely more than possible to take that and turn it into a somewhat affordable portable. That's how we got the Superboy by Hyperkin. Let's turn it on. Jeez, I can't see the screen. The sun's too bright. Son of a bitch! But Hyperkin's still releasing new iterations of the Superboy. This one was the original release. The later models use a widescreen display that stretches out the games. Why? What was the point of this? No Super Nintendo games were widescreen. I can't widescreen displays are more readily available than 4x3 displays right now, but why couldn't they have programmed these things to not stretch the games out to fill the screen? God, I am pissed at this thing I don't own. Well, that's a look at console gaming on the go. See, a lot of these things are actually pretty cool, but they have a lot of roadblocks involved, though I'm willing to look past a lot of them. With these portable home consoles, I never have to go indoors ever again. I still believe that. Look what just happened. Can't rain indoors. The outside's amazing. That's right. Fuck you, house. Hey, all. Scott here. You know, there's this neat thing that happens whenever I talk about game compilations. My house catches on fire. It's happened once before. It's practically a tradition at this point, but I'm laser focused on safety this time. I have a fire extinguisher on standby and loads of safe thoughts up here. Before I start, I should probably take all my flammables off the floor. It's weird they don't count these as actual additions to the collection and just label them as extras. What, were people that pissed at Sega calling Game Gear games real games? They're bonuses! They're bonuses! Namco Museum Remix on the Wii is how I realized I wasn't deaf, but I may be soon. <laughs> There's some unreleased stuff and some extras, which is nice, but I hate to say it, I don't think I'm that into the Intellivision. I'm 22 and said what? <sighs> You're a therapy machine. You're gonna therapize good tonight. You're gonna be the best therapist a therapist will ever ask for. You're gonna do great. So I was thinking what we could the? tackle Ultra Smash what the? Max. This game left me Who gave you my address? Really Why are you here? What the? So just... Wait, 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 let's go one at a time. You first. What the f are you doing here in my house? Okay, fair question. Now it's my turn. I was hoping we could bang out some more therapy. You are a therapist. I'm traumatized. It all works out. I can't give you therapy right now. It's daytime. I'm a night therapist. Don't my credits transfer over? Listen, I didn't become a therapist to hear you vent about Amigo Festival. Amiibo Festival? I'm not registered to give advice about that. Well then are you a registered therapist at all? So, tell me about that dumb f***ing tennis game that hurt your feelings. I don't know. I feel like you're only talking to me now so then I don't tell anybody you're not registered to be a therapist. I feel like I almost have to pay you to listen to me. So it's therapy. Yeah, it's pretty much therapy. After Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, I decided it was time to move on to smaller and worse things. I was at my desk again. Hey y'all, Scott here. Yes! What? Oh, before every therapy session I make predictions. I nailed that one. I'm really good at reading people. Just like, you're not pregnant. How did you know? Oh, I just kind of get this stuff. They call me the human pregnancy test in high school. Well, I'm still on a quest to play through three of Nintendo's worst games of all time. I just finished up Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival and my eyes can no longer feel joy, so let's check more body parts off the list with... Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Okay, so what was this game's deal? Was it good? What do you think? Based on the information, it's hard to tell. What is an Ultra Smash? Is it a move in the game? Is it the game itself? Or is it just two words that have no business being together at all? Yes. Mario Tennis, one of the greatest series of games Nintendo's ever produced. Somebody's probably said that before. The Mario Pyramid showcases the series' growth from simple beginnings to f***ing everything. Yeah, Mario's sports titles were some of the go-to multiplayer party games. They were incredibly popular, so when the next system rolled around... Oh! They really just sort of disappeared for a while. You really are the human pregnancy test. It's an alright game. I'd take this in comparison to a lobotomy most days. Something better than a lobotomy? Most days. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash was the first time I've ever used the term Mario Tennis Ultra Smash is bad. They just started a trailer for a new Mario Tennis game. Hell yes, I am completely indifferent to Mario Tennis. So this is just Alfredo part. Amiibo Festival. This already wasn't a series you liked. That's right, it was a series I tolerated. So what does it matter to you if this game got announced or turned out to be bad? Even if it was the greatest tennis game of all time, you still probably wouldn't care about it. That's not true! I wouldn't probably not care about it, I just wouldn't care about it! Why does Nintendo love Mario Tennis so much? I'm sure the Wii didn't get its own game, but it at least got a re-release of the GameCube one. Then we got Open on the 3DS, Ultra Smash on Wii U, then tennis was included as one of the five sports in Mario Sports Superstars on 3DS in 2017, including horseback riding, thank f**k. And then with no hesitation, a new Mario Tennis game after that! Like, 
Guys, I know this series has the fabled fan who thinks Mario Tennis is the greatest series Nintendo's ever made out there somewhere. Oh, we'll find them. Whatever. Okay, it's releasing holiday of 2015. They obviously want to save a bunch of stuff about this game to reveal later. This obviously isn't the entire game. The game was playable on the E3 show floor, and my god, that is old artwork a peach. Looking at the gameplay, it was just tennis. Yeah, it's a tennis game. Well, what were you expecting? You don't understand. It was just tennis. Oh my god. The Love All trailer, this one introducing the tagline of Play Tennis with Super Mario Powers. They had me at this game having a tagline. Well, at least at this point, the game got actual box art, and the release date was November 20th, one week after Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I f***ing hate calendars. So November 20th rolled around, and you bought the game? You bought the game? Actually, no, not at all. You're making great progress. This was five years ago. I held back on this game for a while. I didn't want to support Nintendo rushing out games that were overpriced and lacking content just to fill their holiday lineup. So I told that video game company, they ain't seen a dime from me. They may be a multi-billion dollar Japanese corporation, but let that be a lesson to them. I ain't giving them any of my business when it comes to $50 tennis games. Now, when I see it on sale for $25 two years later, then I'll bite. Look at this box art. I'll give the game this. It looks good. The layout's nice. Luigi. Unleash your jump shots to take the advantage. <laughs> the marketing people were trying with this game. This blurb is like if a dictionary had harnessed the power of words on the back. Yeah, it's always a good sign when the age rating doesn't have anything to say about the game. No comic mischief, cartoon violence, or sexual content like Mario Power Tennis. The fact Amiibo Festival is racier than Ultra Smash, I don't know what to make of that. The disc! Yeah, they just plastered random characters all around it and called it a day. Oh no. No, not the disc art. That was the one thing I thought they couldn't ruin. And they Nintendo f***ing just like they f*** our bots, our friends! Amiibo Festival. I don't care! Well, this is it. A game I refuse to buy and play because of the principle of it all. You know, if I really wanted to be a hypocrite, I could just enjoy an RPG, but... That's not gonna happen. Oh my god, look, we have four unlockable characters grayed out. Who could they be? Listen, I know that silhouette anywhere. I can't believe they added Grover Cleveland. Do we want the game copied to the gamepad? And maybe even reverse view or, or dynamic? Mario Tennis Ultra Smash is overwhelming me. Yeah, I was starting to get a little sarcastic. But there was a reverse view. Yeah, I just realized this is a tennis game. You just realized? This was my first time playing. It's meant to be played with multiple people. I think that calls for more people to play with. I just have to try to sweeten the deal to try and get them over here. I am forwarding this message to everybody on my contacts list. If you come over tonight, I will inform you how... your uncle just died. <laughs> Did not take you with somebody who had an uncle. I don't. I just couldn't believe my uncle died again. What if I told you your uncle didn't die and you can celebrate by playing tennis? There's one thing I hated more than my uncle. It's tennis. What's wrong with tennis? I don't know. I just never thought I was big enough to play. Like, if I could grow comically big while playing tennis, I'd give it a chance. Well, do I have an Ultra Smash for you. Yeah, as long as it's not Gex, I'm in. Oh, is it Gex Knight? I love Gex Knight. Didn't you get my message about your uncle dying? <laughs> he died for the third time? Yeah, let's fire up Gex. Fucking <laughs> lizard Gex. Oh my god. Oh, so if you were a Gex fan, you'd get that. The game is, uh... It's... It's just tennis! You just use different buttons for different types of shots, but honestly, just hitting whatever button you want does the trick. Sure, performing different shots at the right moments is what skillful players do, which is why we don't. Hey, hey, wait a second. Huh? Yep, this is just a single-player oriented version of Mega Battle. It's for true Mega Battle Gex fans only. Go up against an opponent, beat them, go up against another one, beat them, go up against another one. And then what? I don't remember. It's just a never-ending endurance mode until you lose against somebody. Basically, this game's excuse for a single-player offering. Of course, the farther you go, the more coins you get. That's right, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash has an economy. And Mega Battle. Now, you can use an amiibo figure in this mode as your partner. For some reason, you can't just have another player play with you or a standard CPU. It has to be an amiibo. So, crack out your Animal Crossing amiibo, try scanning them, realize the game only works with certain Mario amiibo, sulk, enter your pockets, scan amiibo. Well, that's knockout challenge. It's just Mega Battle. <laughs> it, it, it is. Moving on to classic tennis. This is tennis without the Mega Mushrooms. All right, you know what? That's the last f***ing straw. All right, I don't f***ing need this. All right, f*** you, f*** this, and f*** tennis. We can even bring our amiibo online to play alongside us. And now all we have to do is find a match. Wait, 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 Gex's online wasn't this bad. What the f is this game? I f had it. 
you, this, and tennis. All right, what else? Does the electronic manual count as a mode? So that's Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, and overall, it's bad tennis. With Mega Battle. Such a classic Gex move. Makes you think it's not Gex, and then comes out and says, I'm a bad tennis game. <laughs> it's right. Gex is a terrible tennis game. Well, you know what they say, if you play two bad video games for children, you're bound to end up in therapy somehow. Actually, I played three. Wait. No. No. That's impossible. You don't mean... No! 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 So this may be the worst game I've ever played in my life, but what about the final terrible Nintendo game that released in 2015? This was a 3DS game that released right alongside Amiibo Festival and Ultra Smash, and it absolutely murdered a series I've always had a soft spot for. So let's try out Mario Party The Top 100. This released two years later and is not in the running. Why is the floor wet? And we're back with Say That Answer. For $5,000, what city Pass. is best known for entertainment? South Carolina. Besides Hollywood. Is that a city? South America. Hey, all Scott here. I'm an idiot. So you watch all these game shows and you think you have what it takes to make it big. Then they happen to ask the one question you didn't write on your skin. This isn't over. I'm going back on Say That Answer, but this time I'll be prepared. I want to feel smart, but I don't want to do anything about it. I'm a f***ing genius! You got the visuals, the sounds, the hosts, all of this adding up to giving you the illusion pet Sajak exists. This is Jeopardy on the NES. See, I always use outdated sources of trivia while studying. I mean, they were right at some point. It's the only way I know everything about the 33 states. Number of players? One. Skill level? If there was a four, I'd hit it. Versus computer? Yes, please. And now for my name. You know, Jeopardy was created by Merv Griffin. It was produced by Merv Griffin Enterprises. I'll be Merv Griffin, home field advantage. Of course, only Merv Gurfits, but at least we have a healthy selection of characters to shuffle through. So this is how God made humanity. We're up against Larry, we're up against Sandy, they're up against death. Okay, so categories. I get to pick the first one. Oh, oh, fishy names. Fishy names! I'm an expert on this stuff. Former FCC chairman called TV of Vast Laceland. Uh, Alright, so I'll buzz in and figure out the answer as I type. You have to type your entire answer in and there's a time limit, so if you just realize the answer is Lemony Snicket, you better be a quick typer. Oh my god, how could Jeopardy be wrong? Well, now Larry's deciding to chime in. Thank God. If Larry got that one right, I would not know what to do with this degree. All right, this tiny short-haired dog is originally from Mexico. Easy, Chihuahua. I forget how to spell it, so hopefully they'll get the gist. I really only know fishy names. Larry, what do you got? All right, this is fucking ridiculous. I'm getting shafted. Larry's just lost it. Sandy's not doing a damn thing. Half of this is better than none glass of water. But I'm right. All right, name something you take from room to room. Back to Jeopardy. Oh, look at Larry using an ampersand in his Jeopardy answer. Now I have some standards to live up to. One who has full membership in a state or nation. Me? A carnival performer who bites the heads off of live chickens. Oh, it's really quite obvious. <laughs> oh, that's right, Larry knows all about this. What is a geek? I really need to reevaluate what I am. Back to Family Feud. If you had four extra hours a day, what would you do? Elope. Not elope. Go. Family Feud SNES. 
Too bad, but I guess it could have been worse. Yeah, if I died. All right, what is this? Eh. Mineral water. No. We're going back to Jeopardy. She is Mel Lazarus's cartoon strip character. Oh, oh, I know this. Damn it, Sandy. She stole my answer. This band leader married his vocalist Harriet Hilliard. Pass. Name something. Milk. That comes in a spray can. Milk again. I may need a walkthrough. What does a woman say when a man proposes? I'll think about it. Ask again later. I don't know, can you? I'm busy this weekend. Who are you? Another name for an asphalt road surface? Road. This special bike has only one wheel. A really bad car. This is the president's home. America. Who ran for president? Didn't Becky run? Oh, my buddy Ed, he definitely- Me. I would like to announce I am- All right, a thing. Apparently an R is the third letter in the word. It's not Fort Wario, I checked. Dork Boney. Card Banco. Park Bench, okay, come on. First question on who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, well, I'll phone a friend. She thinks it's me. Should probably ask the audience to be sure. Narrow it down 50-50. Well, the audience says it's A, but you know, I never trusted this audience. It's because I wasn't a millionaire. I don't want to see the second question anyways. Who needs it? Besides Hollywood, what what city is known for entertainment? Oh my God. Th this was the question that messed me up on the game show. Damn it. Besides Hollywood, okay. Not Hollywood and not South Carolina. That was pure instincts typing that in. Okay, not South America. I'm really disappointed in myself. Look, a city known for entertainment. Circuit City. Am I wrong? Name an entertainer who ha. Dilbert, he's hilarious. Oh, oh, name an entertainer who has been around for as long as you can remember. Yeah, Dilbert. Circuit City. Fuck. Just a heads up, do not write years out in letters and then finish them off with numbers. They don't accept that. This type of abandoned town features 170 buildings. Oh, oh, Fort Wario! Wasn't in Wheel of Fortune, has to be here. Regrettably, no. <laughs> I wish. If you don't know what this Greek sea god also created the horse, say nay. No, sorry. What was I supposed to say? The year the man seen here won the presidential election. Take a look at your monitor. Alex Trebek. All right, guys named Gary for 800. Uh, Bob Saget. No, that's not right. Oh, damn it, yeah, that's right. Guy's named Gary. Gary Bob Saget. Name something that's... Snake. Snake! What's the first thing you open when you... The womb. What's the first thing you open when you come home at night? Jars? Car door. My mouth. What are the answers? I said door! Name a place where people wear white. Me. Name a nursery rhyme that has old in it. Holy Bible. Name something white. Why? Name something. Okay. Ah, oh, name something people buy secondhand. Okay. I did it! I'm a genius! I'm ready to go back and say that answer! For $10,000, what was the second question? Who wants to be a millionaire? Second edition for PlayStation 1. Hey all, Scott here. This is it. They're going to reveal really bad game. I can't wait to see it. Maybe it'll be good! But first, they have to show off the game. Technical difficulties, please wait. And then after that, they're going to reveal the game. There is a fire backstage. Please exit immediately. I really hope that's a working title. This is a press conference. And this is a video game press conference. You see, to most companies or people, press conferences revolve around the person or people of interest appearing in front of us all. They're real? For some reason, when it comes to gaming press conferences, Conferences, the bar is immediately raised. They're not just some sap answering questions. We open up with an explosion. Some guy comes out on stage yelling, "Fuck you!" Here's Wario. So no matter how good or bad a press conference ends up being, will it really affect public perception or sales? Eh. See, we may look like real people, but on the inside, all we care about is if that Xbox presentation was good or not. If you try starting a conversation with people about that one time Pac-Man versus got revealed at E3 2003, you're gonna be struggling. When these things were truly only meant to be viewed by the press, when they were focused on sales numbers and just being the absolute worst. Into uh, 16-bit video games. 
when the industry seems intent on moving on with it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Gaming press conference events and expos became boxing rings, and ever since, each one invoked a sense of. F Sony! Watching a giant event that's all about celebrating video games to the point of putting them up on a jumbo screen in front of a totally not paid for audience really makes it feel like. Wow. Video games aren't a lousy waste of time after all. Couple that with brand new games we've never seen before, new information on previously revealed titles, and impending disappointment, and it's a dream come true. Sometimes game press conferences are more exciting than the games they actually talk about in them. Or they can be worse, that's always an option. The host. This is a constant with these presentations. Sometimes the host makes sense. They're a large figurehead of the company in question and is a great public speaker as well or they just put up a Craigslist personal. I prefer when the host has a direct connection to the gaming industry rather than a celebrity who says, I have loved games for my whole life. I played Pac-Man twice and own a Wii. So here's how you host a gaming presentation. Either wear something or wear something with basketball shorts. So you walk out on stage and you have to wait for the applause to end. Hey. What? You might be here for a while. Welcome to the Video Games Press Conference. Are you ready to see some games? No matter how good the response is, it can always be better. Come on, are you ready to see some games? I never understand the purpose of asking for people to get louder with their applause. That just means it devalues the applause. If it happens, who cares anymore? If you say something you were expecting to get applause and it didn't, just stay silent until somebody says something. And we're not putting the reason in presentation. All right. Or if some jackass starts applauding after every sentence, pause every time to let him get it out. We make games. And yeah. And we yeah, yeah. Woo, yeah, yeah. And we won't make yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta talk with your hands a lot and either act intimidating or act like you're just an average video game fan. Wow. I can't wait to play that video game in my jeans and shirt just like all of you. Yeah, when Google got into gaming with Stadia and the CEO said, yeah, I'm not into games. Well, first off, why are you here? But at least he was honest. When you have hosts that look like they belong on QVC saying, Me personally, I can't wait to play Dragon Quest IX Sentinels of the Starry Skies. Next up is another game I'm looking forward to. My Stop Smoking Coach. Nothing makes me want to buy a video game more than Cube Transitions. As you can see here, I bought Microsoft Office. I was like the Epic Mickey demo guy from E3 2010. He's just so well dressed and kept having to redo the same section over and over again. If I ever become a live demo player, I can only dream of being that well dressed. I really got a hand it to press conferences. They really sold me on really bad game. The trailers were great and there was a dance number on stage. So let's press start and see if it's any good. It's not. Hey all Scott here, online personality test. I have no idea who I am, so just let Google tell me. You have to shout to make a point properly. Yeah. Did you eat anything today? Tylenol. Do you just want to plug and play games? Do I have a face? I won! Once you were done with the setup, you'd flick the switch on the controller and boom. Look at this, no power adapter necessary. It plugs directly into the TV. This is magical. Plug and plays were always charming little distractions and they were easy gift ideas for kids. They were only like 20 bucks a pop and you didn't have to think about what game console your kid had. All you had to know was, oh, my son likes circles, this'll do. But many times these plug and play games feel like an excuse to sell subpar games inside of a colorful container. Like, I, I don't want to play this, I want to eat it. Yes, this is the controller you'd associate with the games included on this plug and play. And and then this is the plug and play you wouldn't be able to identify in the street. Now, how did I never know that considering there are multiple signs showing that this is how you control pole position? Oh, hey, it's my friend. I don't know how I didn't realize I had to twist the joystick in pole position. I was just a kid, leave me alone. I hate my parents. Like the cart came in the box with the plug and play and it was the only cart released for the plug and play. So why make a cartridge slot on the plug and play if there's only one cartridge for it and you could just build the elements of the cartridge on the inside of the plug and play? What the f Get your sketch? I don't have this one anymore, so I'll throw the concept of it to the side and make way for my true final plug and play I owned as a kid. Corroded batteries. Wish I would've known about that before making that pact. I always associate RCA with TV remotes, so they're one of my top 7,000 candidates for making a good game console. Top 8,000. But hey, I mean, if you wanna play Roadstar? Don't? There's also Go Bang Animal Pool. That's not a sentence, it was a list. You have a Lilo and Stitch platformer, Duck Golf. Huh. 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 
no, 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 that can't work. But at least it's fairly G-rated. Sure, you can combine the letters from the title screen to spell ass rat, but I'm sure the kids wouldn't notice. On the surface, these things may seem nothing more than cheap toys with extremely basic games for children. That sentence was finished long ago. Hey all, Scott here. What'll it be? Mario Party! This is a bar. Wait, what is happening? I already talked. Mario Kart 8. Before. Wow. See, that's a fun quirk of talking about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The Space Time Continuum thinks you're just talking about Mario Kart 8 again, so it just gives up. If you talk about the same thing twice, the world doesn't know how to handle it. So, we have to convince God that 8 Deluxe isn't just Mario Kart 8 again, and we aren't just repeating history. Oh, and then I should get new shoes. Many people didn't like the character selection. This graph shows exactly how many didn't. The fact you could only hold one item at a time. This graph shows who did like that. It's a shame the game was only available to Wii U owners. Isn't it fun to be stupid? None of these games were confirmed to be actual games. And they just said, oh, they might be real games, but take everything in this trailer with a grain of salt. But come on, Nintendo, I'm not stupid. The Virgin Radar was going off the charts. These were real games. But there was another one shown off in the trailer that got people talking. Mario Kart 8. A group of friends decide to play it in the car. Nothing fancy, just playing on one of the DLC tracks with King Boo and two item slots. Holy sh! Well, I'm sure they wanted to focus on new experiences coming to the Nintendo Switch rather than highlight an old Wii U game of theirs coming over. It's smart to do that with a new console, to really show how the Switch will be home to brand new experiences rather than ass old ones. And a couple years later after that presentation, my favorite games on the Switch are the Wright Brothers First Flight and the Agricultural Revolution. There's nothing but old sh** on this thing. I was so excited for this. The fact that we were getting a Mario Kart this early after a system's launch, that was incredible. I was already still pretty jazzed about the Switch launching, so add a new Mario Kart on top of that? I I was thrilled! That was Mario Kart! They removed the stamps. So, who's ready for me to fing lose it? But I'm worried how auto acceleration and smart steering will affect the driving abilities of our youth. Go! Alright, so did I do it? Did I prove that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is different enough to warrant a discussion on its own and it's just not Mario Kart 8 again? I'll take that as a no. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I don't get new shoes and the universe collapses on itself. I guess I'll know this for next time. Hey y'all, Scott here. Apparently my input on wars throughout history is extremely important, so it finally makes sense why after the French Revolution in most history textbooks it just says, but what would Scott think? It's the middle of class in 2011, and all these kids are discussing politics. Which is better, the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360? One of them asks, Scott, which one do you prefer? And you ruin your credibility. Nintendo. Microsoft entered the ring by announcing the Xbox. That should give Sony a run for their money. I'm sure Sony keeps this photo on their nightstand. What happened here? Both systems received one more redesign later in their lives. These ones focused on giving us consoles so cheap I can try to break it over my knee. Keyword try. The PlayStation 3 picked up so much steam later on, it actually ended up winning. A classic underdog story. It always warms my heart to see a multi-billion dollar corporation win at the end of the day. But who really won? Sony. My personal history with these consoles was I was always a Nintendo guy. My state's government already knows that. Now, the PS3 controller does look pretty classy. It looks more elegant. If a 360 controller's on your couch, I immediately think you cheat on your girlfriend and your fingernails look disgusting. This has more class. But hey, the Xbox 360 can play original Xbox games. This is the ultimate pleasure. Could you imagine a worse note to get on your windshield? But, turns out, I'm not blinded by nostalgia or love for a specific company. I picked the PS3 when the 360 was the console I owned, so that's a plus to my reviewing skills. The only thing the PS3 could use is a version of Mario Party 9. This game's actually terrible, but I love it because it's made by Nintendo. So, tell me where it all began. All right. So, tell me where it all began. All right. Oh, oh, you're that guy. The one and only. I was your therapist. You're more delusional than I thought. You were my patient that wouldn't stop talking about virginity. And not being your patient. You can play that mammal game with the toys. I would remember if that happened. It's on my bucket list. The tennis thing with Big Luigi. That game doesn't exist. It would be on the news. And you're about to talk about something else. And that's what I called it. See, this is where your story falls flat. It's really unlike me to talk about three things. You freaked me out, man. The fact you gave a shit about three different games scared me. Who knows what you're capable of giving a shit about? Let me get this straight. You believe I, who answered a one ad in the paper for therapists, used to have you as a therapist, and you went insane after therapy sessions with you about three games caused you to question faith. 
That's my obituary. Okay. Well, I can't help you until I know what the third game is going to be. Why? It sounds like a good thing to add in my book, my patient's personal stories and I. I don't know. You didn't talk about it. It was a game. Wait. Yeah, I remember a game. Ah! You were a therapist! I tried to be a news anchor, but I wasn't cut out. So I became a therapist, yeah. And I was your patient, and I had to go to you because I played three Nintendo games from 2015 that were so bad, I had to seek therapy. Well, what was the third game? What happened when you played the third game? After I get therapy for playing all three of these games, I'm going to suppress everything, forget who I am, and become a therapist. And here we are today. So it's just a 2D game about a robot! A bad 2D game about a robot. Those exist? Not until 2015 they didn't. Listen, can you just get over this trauma so I can enjoy my therapy in peace? No, you need to get over your trauma. I need therapy, alright? And you're going to give me advice on how to improve my mental health, and you're going to like it! You were a therapist! Don't you give yourself therapy? My mirror is in the shop! You don't know what I go through every day. How do you expect me to give you secret therapy when we didn't even finish our original session? You know, I'll tell you what. If I finish your session, will we do my therapy? You know there are millions of customer support websites that would love to hear your personal problems. You need to finish what you started. We need to end this now! I have dinner tonight with my family, and I gotta finish this before then, so I don't show up insane! Okay, fine. Let's go to where it all began. Nice place. Is this your couch? Yeah. Okay, this place, so... You ever take a shit? Oh yeah! <laughs> Big fan. Cool, so you know what this place is. This is the bathroom. No, it's always there? Well, on the off chance I need to restock, no, but I keep these here as a hobby. I like to curate them. This game blows. Uh, this game blows. Oh! Game oh blows. my god! It's worse than I thought! This game blows. I really should have reconsidered installing that. <laughs> You know, I may have left the force a while ago, but when it comes to makeshift therapy offices, I still got it. I've seen better. So, tell me where it all went wrong. Well, ah! this game is worse than I thought. Chibi Robo Ziplash is a stupid fucking fuck shit, fuck, fuck shit. You know, that sounds about right, but something just doesn't seem right. Oh, hey, oh, Scott here. Now this is therapy! Chibi Robo Ziplash. Over the years, I've been harsh to this game, calling it such names as bad. You may say, Scott, it's just an opinion. I'll respond with, I don't know, the fact detector says otherwise. It's a shame because Chibi Robo, as a character, has a similar level of charm as any of the other cutesy Nintendo mascots. If they just gave him a chance to succeed, he could live on for quite a long time. Wanna know what happened? I already got tickets to the funeral! And Nintendo specifically requested that. They wanted this game to be a new spin on Chibi Robo. They apparently thought the original didn't sell well because right when everybody on the planet was about to buy it, they looked up the genre. Oh! That makes no sense. Oh, come on! You need to be more accepting of different resolutions. For example, my New Year's resolution is to drink more. It's July. Yeah! See, that's when we entered 2015, and Nintendo had enough of the series not doing well. They thought, you know what the problem with Chibi Robo is? Is lack of empathy? No. Overqualification? Barely. Tax evasion? That's me. Nope, it's the fact Chibi Robo isn't a 2D platformer! That's my parents' problem with me, too. Chibi Robo Zip. <laughs> zip. <laughs> game. I've always just had a bit of a problem with this one. Oh, hi Scott, it's your mom. You're adopted. Well, that's understandable. I appreciate your transparency. Oh, and Chibi Robo Ziplash exists. No! You didn't like that they turned the small robot into Poochie Town? No, I personally feel there was a lot of potential for Chibi Robo to work fine in 2D. You're mental. Let me finish. No! You're insane! And I don't work with people who have mental problems. You're a therapist. Oh, come on. I think Ziplash is a great name. If they replace the word good with the word Chippy Robo Ziplash, I have no problem with it. You'd be okay with replacing a word just like that? Oh, I would. And that's saying something. Words mean a lot to me. Words have been in my family for generations. I'm a word buff. Go ahead, name a word. Any word. What? Love that one. Upon release, Ziplash received a price drop. So you barely played this game, and yet you hate it this much? No, I hate it way more than this much. You can't form an opinion on a game you've barely played. 
It's unethical. That's why we have HR. So I should play 10 hours of a game I already know I don't like just to have an opinion on it? Well, if you don't like it, don't play it. But how would I know I don't like it if I don't play it? Well, just stop doing stuff! This game has been enough time soaking. It's time to play through it and give it a fair shot. Because who knows, maybe 60 hours in, I'll start to see its worth. I will not put this down until I beat this game. So let me just do a little bit of that, a little bit of that. There. Can you put the game in for me? No, that goes against my family's tradition. They never ask me to pop in Chibi Robo Ziplash, and I will always never do that to honor them. Well, we're gonna need help with this. Can you at least get this off of me? Now that, me and my family did all the time. I am forwarding this message to everybody in my contacts list. If you stop by tonight, we'll play. Don't lie, I've lied before and it's too fun. Chibi Robo Ziplash. <laughs> Did not take you as a Ziplash fan. I'm not. I knew you were lying, and I'm finally willing to give Gex a shot. Oh no. It's the Gex f Anyone up for round Gex? What if I told you I didn't even own Gex, and I wasn't lying about Ziplash? That's ridiculous! We played Gex that one time! That was Amiibo Festival. Well that- That was Ultra Smash. But- That was a car wash we went through together. Hey, I heard you didn't own Gex. From myself? <laughs> yeah. Word gets around. You keep these on you? I thought you hated Gex. Hey, I cross-referenced that copy whenever I need to be reminded how much I hate Gex. Yeah. Yeah, f that lizard. Alright, let's play Gex. You know what I like about Gex? Consistency. Okay, can somebody pop in the game for me? I, I can't do it myself. You knew that was gonna end up happening anyways. I was worried that 3DS wasn't hammer resistant. You're welcome. Alright! Chibi Robo Ziplash! Swing into action with your Chibi plug and help Chibi Robo save the world! I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh! That's a f***ing cheese it! Let's get this over with. So the story starts. Chibi Robo is cleaning a space shuttle. I don't give a sh. You know, this game doesn't seem too bad so far. It has graphics, and it exists. Yeah, you know me. I'm a sucker for existence. Me too. That's why I love Gex. Guys, like, the game works, but the movement is more annoying than fun. It's like just gliding in the air. You have to hold X while falling. It's like, it just doesn't feel good. It feels awkward. It feels like a tacked on move more than anything. And then there's rolling in the game. Like, you have to hold R, and it's only used in, like, four levels throughout the entire thing. It's like, it's worthless! Wait, there's a roll in the game? Oh, yeah! Gex. You're about to fight the World 3 boss fight, sir. You are in a video game made of blocks, even though we also like to act like you're in real life Europe. Here's a realistic looking bag of Funyuns. I personally enjoy how inconsistent the art style is. Yeah, inconsistency is a fun quirk of Gex. I think it really keeps you on your toes. Like a mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, okay, I get it. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. How about, I think it's confusing. None of this references the fact that Chibi Robo is a tiny robot, which is his entire character. The plot based level design is putrid, and this game just doesn't know what it wants to be at all. So, tell me where it all began. Oh, don't even get me started. I'm gonna need a priest. So, I hear the game looks, the levels are incredibly boring and they go on forever, the product placement is completely out of place, the moveset is more cumbersome than fun, I don't like it. Well, that sounds like somebody that hasn't played enough of this game. Why don't you play another five hours and come back to us? Yeah, it's a fine game. It's not like the level progression is like one of the stupidest f***ing game mechanics you've ever seen. After you beat a stage, you have to spin the destination wheel. That sounds like fun. What does it do? Well, it decides what stage you're doing next. If you land on one, you go to the next stage. If you land on two, you go to the stage after the next. Now you'll still have to beat the stage you skipped over to progress. So what the f*** is the point of jumping all around like this? The six stages per world are set up like most 2D platformers. They gradually get harder the farther you go. So why make players play them out of order if that's the case? And also while the stages are deliberately called World 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, there's an obvious order to follow here. Why do I have to spin this wheel? The wheel isn't meant to be fun. It's meant to be a roadblock, much like how the whiplash is limited and the ziplash is slow. Why wouldn't I want to go one stage at a time? I can't see 
see what any future stages are gonna contain. There's no reason why I'd wanna play level five before level three, so why would I wanna skip around like this? Obviously, the game wants you to progress normally. The end of a level is symbolized by three UFOs. Hitting the gold one gives you three destination wheel spins, silver gets you two, bronze gives you one. Obviously, you want the gold so you can guarantee you can keep spinning the wheel to get the stage you want, as in the next one in line. Because if you spin the wheel and it lands on a three and uh-oh, you land on a stage you've already cleared, you have to play through it again! The game knows this isn't fun. Why else would they reward you with extra chances to spin by hitting the gold UFO? Why else would you be able to purchase wheel slots so you can get the exact number you want? Wait, what the f*** is the point of this then? If I can just buy slots with the exact numbers I want with the coins I collect, that just defeats any and all purpose of the wheel. It's just an annoying thing they added for the sake of being annoying doesn't even make sense in the context of the game. You still have to spin the wheel even when all the slots take you to the boss. What is wrong with this game? Not much. I, I, I don't know what else to say, man. I don't want to play through hours more of this game just to get coins for a final boss I'm not going to like. So... I can see where the budget went. You know, it all comes together in the end. I mean, I like the game, but now I really like it. X. Just because a game doesn't inherently have terrible level design or any major bugs or glitches, that doesn't mean it's fine. It just means it works. Just because a game works doesn't mean it's good. I don't like playing this game. I hate what it stands for. I don't like that they made fans of Chibi Robo buy this with the hope of Chibi Robo having a future. I don't like that they thought so low of people and consumers thinking that they'll love this generic, terrible 2D platformer. I don't like this game. You know, when you put it that way, I kind of like the idea of this game being terrible. Yeah, and as a therapist, therapy generally moves the quickest when I agree with everything the patient has to say. Gex will be Gex. You know, I've had a ritual for the past three years or so. This game blows. This game blows. This game blows. This game blows. As much as I like that, I think I want to end this now. How can we take each and every one of the Chibi Robo Ziplash games in existence and eliminate each and every one of them? We're swimming with rats. Can't swim. Love rats. I'm in. More of a lizard guy. I'm deathly afraid of circles. Come on, guys. I have thrown 95% of Ziplash's population down the toilet over the past three years. If we go down there right now, we can finish them off before they ever resurface. I have as much confidence in this as I have facial hair. You have facial hair. Where? Well, I'm in. You know what they say. WWGD. What would Gex do? The G stands for Jesus. All right, Rex. Oh, the revolution isn't for everybody. Oh. I dropped something down the toilet last week. Remind me to look for it. Oh! There are my jeans! Okay, so keep an eye out for these games. What does it look like again? Uh, hard to describe. Shapes, four sides, colors. Does it have Chibi Robo Ziplash on it? Yes! There they are. I just thought that's what water looked like now. Weird name for Gex. Why are the copies circling around? I f***ing hate circles! All the copies you've thrown down the toilet over the past three years have become sentient? That's why my plumber f***ing hated me. Guys, come on, Gex gonna do this, right Gex? It's the anti-Gex! No, it's just a sewer monster comprised entirely of copies of Ziplash! I'm going with the anti-Gex. Even the anti-Gex has the word Gex in it. Now that's what I call a good point. You're a terrible game, but that doesn't mean I won't overcome you. I'm better than that!
the back. I need an energy and ammo. So what's the game plan here? What the hell is the game plan here? What's the exact opposite of this thing? Not Gex, that's for sure. No. No, I think it's Gex. You know, I've always wondered what trauma felt like. Thanks. Thanks for sticking it out with me. I, I, I got it all out of my system. Nintendo had a bad 2015, but that doesn't mean I should let it affect my mental health. And so what if somebody likes a game I dislike? It doesn't matter. They're wrong anyways. It's been an honor serving you. I can finally tell you why you're so messed up in the head. After playing a game as good as Chibi Robo Ziplash, it will definitely make you feel inadequate. <laughs> sure. You can rip up that rain check for therapy I had with you. I'm good on my own now. I think I'm going to start my own therapy business. Call it the Think Barrel. Nah, good on you. I love seeing therapists start their own business. Yeah, uh, what was your name? Dr. Atrix, but you can call me Jerry. Well, thank you, Dr. Jerry Atrix. You know, I still have this on me. Oh my god, for real? Oh yes! We're turning this Gex night into a Gex year. What the f is this? Hey all, Scott here. I'm leaving the door open now. I don't know, air's fun. Been on good streak lately. Air jump the shark. I have it all now. Scoliosis, mitosis, bed bugs, bed bats. Oh, I got some free time to kill as I heal up. Uh, I might be able to actually play some of these games here. Or shapes. F them. They make everything more complicated. Without shapes, I wouldn't care about the Wii U and GameCube boxes being the same. Dang! You ever have those things with a medium you enjoy that you overly care about that nobody else seems to? I think you're a big fan of numbers, but man, you're really into seven. Using the logic of it doesn't matter basically means everything on a store shelf should be in a blank cardboard box. Who cares what's inside anyways? I just want to buy the PS4 Spider-Man. Well, that's a gun. So let's take a look at all the major consoles throughout history and rate their packaging templates starting with the Magnavox Odyssey. I do like seven. They introduced the Nintendo Entertainment System header. It was red and small. Like ants. It's time to take care of your games. Put them up on the shelf, keep them in a safe container. It'll keep it safe, I swear. Well, the blank boxes are far more endearingly retro. These simply look really nice. Like ants. I initially thought a black game represented that this game is for far more mature audiences, and then I saw Chicken Run had it and reacted accordingly. <laughs> And not only that, it had a power button, not some power switch. It had a button just like home consoles. That was honestly a really cool thing to me back then. Take it. Cheers. And why mimic the GameCube's box art design? Bless the GameCube's heart, but it was one of Nintendo's worst performing consoles at the time. So what do you do? You replicate its box art? I'm not saying this is why the Wii U failed, but they were kind of asking for it at this point. But you know what isn't really lame? The Xbox One cases. I have officially lied once today. Hey all, Scott here. You know, one of the top 10 names for children this year happens to be Sonic the Hedgehog 3, because when everybody wants to be unique, nobody's unique. Stop naming your children unique names, just name your kid an Earl. This one wasn't nearly as iconic to 90s pop culture as the first two. And now to Sonic fans. I love when it does that. When it came out three months after Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Mach- There were four Sonic titles in the span of three months? Sure there were. I still believe Sonic Spinball was a lucid dream I had once and nothing more. 
and it gets harder and harder to believe that. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was meant to be the magnum opus of the series at that point, the ultimate Sonic adventure, starting development after Sonic 2. <laughs> really? See, Sonic 2 was developed by STI. We learned about them when talking about Sonic 2 and Sex Ed. New attitude, new enemies. It was a yearbook quote contender, I'll give them that. I should finally beat this game. There really are no excuses anymore. I've beaten Devil's Third, my prerequisites out of the way. If I can't be happy with myself, then I sure as hell can beat Sonic 3. You ever spray paint a tomato blue? You've seen the Sonic 3 title screen. This isn't right, a Genesis Sonic game you can save your progress in? Have the past three years been a lie? I don't know where I am, but I have the sudden urge to not have sex. We jump into a cutscene. Two mammals, a plane, it must be Sonic 3. None of these rewards are cool. None of them make you want to call your dad over. Dad, you won't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, a fucking headshot. Not only that, the way they set up the special stages this time is ingenious. Similarly, they're hidden throughout levels. If you find a fat ring, I have news for you. Yeah! Everything's coming together. I'm gonna live this up while I can before we get to the coveted Sonic bullshit. I am going to treasure this moment. This is a Sonic game where everything's coming together. The level design complements everything they were trying to do here. But I know Sonic on Genesis, all right? There's always some garbage they threw in here that makes absolutely no sense. So I'm gonna be extra diligent and try to find something they messed up. This game. F this game! Yes, as previously stated, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was envisioned as a massive project. So much so, they had to split it into two parts to not only release Sonic 3 on time, but also so then they wouldn't have to deal with unloading the entire game onto one cartridge. So we have one more Genesis Sonic title to look at. On top of Sonic 3D Blast and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine and Knuckles KDX for the Sega 32X add-on, but not Sonic Spinball because I have a giveable shit about reality and this isn't it. Name one time Sonic Spinball existed. Go ahead. Name one. Sonic Spinball. Sonic Spinball? Sonic Spinball. I was a different man back then. No! Hey y'all, Scott here. Have you seen something that looks like this? If you found that, that's me caring about the Nintendo 64. Please dispose of it immediately. I know, I'm putting these up and I just like the attention. Family photo. Oh god, that's embarrassing. That's better. The Nintendo 64, one of the most revolutionary consoles of all time, helped standardize how games in the third dimension look, play, and control, introduced so many genres, franchises, concepts, and I still don't give a shit. I'm being a bit harsh here. It's not that I don't like the Nintendo 64, I just don't care about it. I want to learn to love this console, because as it stands, it's all right. But that won't do. I have to appreciate everything Nintendo does for me. Criticism is just whining. Nintendo made buttons. What did you do, Dad? They had to get to work on a successor to the Super Nintendo, and near the end of the console's life, it was pretty obvious where the video game industry was heading. Downhill! F this console! The Ultra 64 cartridges could barely hold anything in comparison, could barely hold video and audio clips, and if they could, they were severely compressed and downgraded and cost a mortgage to produce. But they were harder to pirate and had faster load times. That makes them better. And ever since that decision, Nintendo's always been number one. Two. Three. One. Wii U. That's almost the weirdly beautiful thing about a console that didn't do that well. The Wii U era was pretty tart, but I felt there was this cool connection I had with other Wii U owners. It was called a mutual hatred. But of course, the charcoal color was the de facto, coming with a great... Spider? Oh look, it's time to be confused about the Nintendo 64 controller. D what the hell? Anyways, the Nintendo 64 launched with games here in North America, and two of them at that. Japan had it way better. They got three games. Alongside the system's release, Super Mario 64 and Pilot Wing 64 came out, that was it. If you were living in Japan, you had the choice of buying Saikyo Habu Shogi as well, which meant you were either buying Mario 64 or Pilot Wings. Super Mario 64 was the flagship title, the reason you wanted to buy a Nintendo 64 if Pilot Wings was sold out. Popping this cartridge in and turning it on. It's me, Mario. Hello. Oh my god, he has a face? As a kid, it was a blast using my imagination with this game, coming up with crazy things to do or just not do anything at all, just enjoying being in this world. This will always be one of the greatest video games of all time. One of. But all Pokemon Stadium games supported the transfer pack. Pokemon Stadium 1, which only released in Japan. Pokemon Stadium 1, which was Pokemon Stadium 2 in Japan. And Pokemon Stadium 2, which was Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver in Japan. Never like logic. There was AU Pikachu, which used the voice recognition unit, don't you? Pika. 
It doesn't. This is actually just straight up called the 64DD, not the Nintendo 64DD, and these are incredibly rare and expensive. You'd have to be a f***ing idiot to own one of them. But the good games for the system were really good games. It nailed multiplayer, and no matter what, there will always be a reason to fire this system back up. It may not be my favorite Nintendo system, but I care about it. I found it! Hey all, Scott here. You know, so many people ask me, where do you get all those games? Yeah, that'll do. This is a used video game. Could you tell? Video game users are disgusting. We have sticky chairs and eat without socks on. I don't even remember ever getting a used movie or album as a kid, but video games? Hell yeah, this one had gum in it. Why are used games so prevalent and... And why won't this come off? Firstly, we've got the lookalikes. Use games that look nearly indistinguishable from new games. The game case is spotless, everything's included, absolutely no problem whatsoever. You could eat off of these things. My copy of Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii? Not my copy of Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii! One day in 2011, I found it on the floor with this gash in the middle. I did patch it up with tape, and thankfully it was in a spot I could cover up with black sharpie, but these two moments made me realize games are far more fragile than you may expect. Which is odd, game companies know their products are handled by young children, you'd think they'd use bulletproof paper or something. Because this is just the beginning of the end. Thirdly, there's the frauds. You see them at the store and think, oh, that's looking pretty good, pull it off the shelf and weep. There's something wrong with my WarioWare. It's more fun to see the boxer that's drawn on with Sharpie. It really puts you in the shoes of the last person who owned the game. Like, how did you lose the box art? I got the cashier to think they were ringing up apples when they were really ringing up bananas. I just learned an easy way to get stuff on the cheap. Steal it. I remember watching somebody open a game for a birthday present. They open it up and go, nice. They start peeling off the shrink wrap and they didn't realize they were also peeling off the game case itself. Happy birthday! What, did you like spill water on your game and you tried to dry it off with a saw? Oogon, you just squirt that all over- Next person that owns this is gonna have the exact same questions I do. What the f**k happened here? This usually helps get rid of that sticker residue. Now don't get me wrong, I like this, but I would never drink it. It just smells too bad, I, I couldn't. Oh, this was purchased within Microsoft by a Microsoft employee who really wanted to play whacked. That's really cool. Now, why do they need an ass large sticker that's impossible to peel off? I'm trying everything I can here. Use games, they just bought from some sap in the store. They can charge whatever they want for them. They can make as much of a profit off of those as they so please. So why do they do this? Yeah, no problem. That gets cleaned, avoid your warranty. Hey, uh, here's that game you wanted back. Uh, <laughs> I, I lost the case. Um, <laughs> I, I left the manual in Reno. Um, <laughs> I wanted to give you that back. Uh, I wanted to give you back what's rightfully yours. So when am I looking after your daughter? Let's see how many problems we can find on this, okay? So, somebody put a sticker on the spine of the artwork, tried ripping it off. This is a GameCube game in a PlayStation 2 case. They still have literally every piece of paper that was included originally for some reason. And worst of all, it's f***ing geist. So while used games can be... f***ing disgusting, they're a part of gaming culture. And I would love to see a digital game do this. I found Dig Dug. Hey all, Scott here. You know what I love about video games? Connecting a controller. Parental control. Airplane mode. Screen burning reduction. Auto sleep. And that's it. It's a brand new console. Wanna play a game? No! However, the system with a menu setup and pre-installed software I remember the most fondly will always be the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Wii is a close second. This thing had such a fun menu to explore back in the day, mostly due to the Wii channels it housed. Uh, calling them channels was definitely to make them feel more like TV stations and to give us a false sense of security, but these were applications for the Wii, and this was one of the first game consoles to have a cavalcade of pre-installed goodies to sniff, which made productivity a bitch. I got places to be, but that damn forecast channel's calling my name! Oh. So when we turn the Wii on, we're greeted to... I never read this. Warning, health and safety. Before playing, read your operations manual for important information about your health and safety. Wow, I never would have known! Is this really necessary every time you boot up the console? I mean, yes, it's I don't want to get sued necessary if somebody decided I didn't see a warning screen, I'm gonna eat my f***ing Wii. Well, let's go through all of these, starting with the disc channel. No. Discs? 
is this a revolt? So first up, the me name is brilliant, flipping over a portion of the we name to make something completely different. Now, you could flip the other half, but I don't know what a screaming W is gonna do for you. I really take me making seriously. One of the best compliments somebody could give you is, damn, your me's pretty hot. All right, final question. Oh, do we want this me to mingle? I swear to God, if I can crossbreed my me's. The photo channel. Funny story, the Wii has an SD card slot. Now, what can you do with it? The photo channel. I love the photo channel. It was such a fun way to experience your photos. You know what wasn't a fun way to experience your photos? The Wii Shop channel. The worst photo experience on Wii. Thankfully, I have a wonderful thing called the time capsule with old footage of the Wii Shop channel on it. Yeah, this is great. Next up, we have channels that need no introduction. The forecast channel. The news channel. Okay, news and forecasts are no more. No wonder nothing's happened the past few years. If I can't do something as simple as play a European game, how do you expect me to play something that doesn't technically exist anymore? Well, I can sure as I'll try. There's a fan continuation of We Connect 24 called ReConnect 24. Let me see if I can handle this. I can just look at old footage. I never had this channel on my Wii, but it just so happened to only be a four minute long video where you'd entered it and that exact video is available on this promotional DVD I have. Thank God I was gonna fucking blow it. Did you know you can connect your Wii console to the internet? Yep. It's just a simple infomercial on pretty much everything we just talked about. Is it worth getting pissed about if it was never preloaded on your Wii? Yeah, but at least owning it on DVD, I can play with it. Hey all, Scott here. You know, I have a life outside of talking about stupid Nintendo games. I almost got murdered. Finally, I'm a victim. It's exciting when you got nothing else going on. That's just the thing though. I do have things going on. I'm a busy guy, which is why I'm one of the few who take attempted murder seriously. Every murderer needs a murderer and ours just so happened to be Mr. Officer Steel Wool. Lucky for me, I printed this off before he tried to murder us. A while back, we were all invited to a dinner party. No murders allowed. Somebody didn't read the itinerary. Everybody except the host recovered from being murdered, which makes us prime suspects to sue him. So today's the big day. We're taking Steel Wool to court and I'm gonna be a star. I can see the headlines now. Murder victims innocent. What's the code? I was murdered. So, are you ready to be one of the first allies in the war against murder? Oh. I don't think I can be in the same room as the man who killed me. Don't be such a baby. I was in the same room as your murderer and he f***ing stinks! I don't know, just why did he kill me? Was there something about my face? I wouldn't take it too personally. It probably has nothing to do with your looks. He probably just f***ing hates you. Nothing personal. So what are we suing him for? Defamation. Good. Your social status does really plummet after being murdered. Where is it again? Vegas. It's a 28 hour drive. With normal traffic. 28 hours? I have jury duty in 28 hours. Oh, don't go throwing hours in my face. I'm the biggest hours fan there is. Oh, thank God. Turns out I'm serving jury duty on our trial. You're the victim. An unbiased victim. Hello? What do you mean you don't have a ride? Alright, fine. We got a carpool. <laughs> I'm just saying, if we took that exit, we could have shaved off 10 minutes. Welcome to the Litigation Station, the brand 9 out of 10 lawyers recommend. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to my judge in training. I'm going to be your judge this evening. Only here because my mom made me get a summer job. It's in September. Well, all right, I got him biased to be. Just, I don't know, I'm gonna crumble. There's no way I can face my killer. I f***ing had it, okay? This is just outlaw trauma! Yeah, I wrote the bad. <laughs> Great, the f***ing person's gonna be our lawyer. Guys, I was there throughout the entire thing. I know what happened. And plus, representing yourself in court always works out. Like, and, and even. Can we have court outside today? Damn it, she's good. Objection, your lawyer. I have vitamin D sufficiency. Time to break out this icebreaker again. I call steel wool to the stand. <gasps> So, Mr. Wool, did you kill anybody? Objection, he doesn't have to answer that. Yeah, that is a pretty personal question. I mean, I know he killed me, but I don't blame him for not answering that. Freaked out, I just wanted to make sure the jury was on our side. The only member of the jury was murdered by him. I did hear he's leaning towards the defendant. I'm leaning towards him too. We're fucked. Your Honor, I called Jebediah Jab to the stand. Oh great, now they called the guy who doesn't believe in us. This is fucking great. So, Jeb Jab, is there anybody else a part of the Jab family? Nope, just me and my vegan in crime, Terry Lesler. Isn't getting murdered against the vegan creed? I, I, I think it's frowned upon. Yes, you don't want to kill any animals, but you can get killed all you want? Doesn't that seem a little unfair? Th th that is very quite bullshit. yes. He's slipping. We're losing him. Yeah, I'm getting real sick of your attitude. We're in Vegas, be happy. Do you really think it's fair to make all these allegations about this poor man? 
He's traumatized. You have no idea the impact murdering five people has on a person. Oh my god, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Like, you didn't mean to get murdered, right? Objection, your honor, I'm mad. I've seen matter, keep going. I think I have one more question. Do you think Officer Steel Wool murdered you and four others? Do I know he did? Yeah. Do I think he did? No. I can do this. Your Honor, I call Rex Mose to the stand. Woo! So Rex, what do you think of Officer Steel Wool? I think he's a fine person and a better murderer. So you admit he's a murderer? On the one day I was with him. Your Honor, should we really base this man's conviction off of what he did on one measly day? Yeah, seems kind of rude. Rex, I have evidence from the night of the murders. What is this? Oh, that's a gun. Interesting he knows what a gun is. I thought Officer Steel Wool was the murderer here. Yeah, how do you know what that is if he wasn't the killer? <laughs> Did I say gun? I'm a Brennan 92 x full-size handgun. <laughs> Your Honor, he's just throwing out random words. He doesn't even know what they mean. He's a dictionary with feet. That's what we call him. Allow me to ask the others to name that specific object. What is this? Gex? A photo. The letter L. My gun. OK, so Rex, did you kill? Your Honor, that says it all right there. This is a heart rate monitor. Yet Mr. Wolves isn't going off right now. He's not hooked up to one. Your Honor, can I win now? No. Okay. Listen, if they convict you, I'll just start yelling. They can't convict you if you can't hear. That's why the deaf don't go to jail. Ah, oh, f that. This is just outlaw conviction. They should outlaw you, you fucking murderer. I call Wendy's employee to the stand. Who's gonna be the jury? Hmm. So, Wendy's employee. Where are you employed, exactly? Why, Wendy's, of course. And, uh, what do you do there? Well, I'm the employee. An employee like you getting murdered when he has a job to go to in the morning. Seems a bit unlikely to me. Well, I, I just didn't work the next day. I don't buy it. Damn. Can you check the bathroom? They got free soap in there. Focus, we gotta reel this one in. Like a fish! Yeah! 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Money in this fight. He better win. Terry, long time vegan, full time sewer. If if you can't sue a person, why talk to him? Can you point to the man in this room who killed you and your four of the cohorts? Not not even a little bit, no. You're really cockblocking me here. I can't even look my killer in the eye. You expect me to use a finger on him? Well, what do you want out of this trial? An apology. And that isn't gonna happen unless you point him out right now. Uh, how can one finger decide a man's destiny? He's pointing at Rex! He's pointing at Rex! Oh, man. This is just outlaw me, your honor! Oh, what now? I call Scott Wozniak to the stand. So, Mr. Wozniak. That's me to you. That's impossible! He's a murderer! A murderer with a heart of gold? Oh, and I'm not a murderer with a heart of gold? You're a murderer? I was lying as a joke! So you lied in a court of law? As a joke! So who was your plus nine? The justices of the Supreme Court. We go way back. How do you know them? I should have run for them. So you were a bailiff? Oh, that's what it's called? I thought they just didn't know my name. So are they gonna show up? I don't know, let me check. That's impossible, he's a murderer! They said maybe. No way, you know the justices too? I'm their cousin. I thought you said you had no family. Well, that was to get the sympathy vote. He was ruthless! He tried to shoot me and I'm allergic to bullets! I did it. Well, that's a blow to your case. All right, Officer Steelwool, for being so brave and coming clean like that, I'll let you off lightly. You are sentenced to death. I don't think he did it. Hey all, Scott here. Here at Give a F Productions, we deal exclusively with topics that are Giveable, and if your topic needs to find giving, then we'll take a look at it. We don't give a. F Let's see what our latest request is. Not even we have limits. Hey everybody, I'm E3 2000. <laughs> who the f is this guy? And who doesn't give a f about what Acclaim did in 2000? You'd be surprised. Wait, this isn't an Acclaim press disc. This is worthless! And Sega's booth as a whole. I mean, look at all this pizzazz. They really went all out as if they were gonna die the next day. Sony, our favorite little corporation. They're making the PlayStation 2. How could they dare to get anything but five knee slaps? Please don't. And E3 2000 was definitely mediocre. Though next year we should have new consoles to look at and one less second to talk about. And without E3 2000, we wouldn't get to that point. So that has got to make E3 2000 worth giving a f over. I tried, okay? Hey all, Scott here. Some words of advice. Things will get better later than sooner, don't you worry. When I was little, I used to think, when I'm Scott, I want to be this, and look at me now. What does it take to be this? 
Skin for one. It takes a lot of work to be me. You have to be tough. You have to have skin. You have to own this. I should hire an assistant. This is Mario Party. I thought it was a bear. Look Aww. at all these. It's almost like there's 24 of them. The Mario Party series, a constant in society. As the death toll goes up, a new Mario Party comes out. You may be attracted to this game for the simple concept, but remember, it's not just a board game, it's an adventure. Huh, <laughs> yeah, f you board games. Yes, we get it. Mario Party can be cruel. Doesn't mean I don't like it. I mean, hey, it's my best friend. He's a snitch, he's a killer, but he'll always be my friend. It's just, you're winning, having a great time, and then you get the death sentence for winning too much. Ah, well, this guy has more eyelashes, so we'll give him the eyelash award. For second place, you get the grand prize. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's Mario and his good friends. They hang out. Mario thinks he's the superstar. No reason is given. Peach thinks she's the superstar. No reason is given. Yoshi thinks he's a superstar because he has energy, something every being has. I have a neck. You don't see me bragging. Yeah, being a game that's best played with four whole people means... This isn't gonna work. I thought telling the IRS I was four people would help, but no. I need bodies. I could play by myself, but Mario Party's like a marriage. It's more fun with up to four people. And at that point, I might as well make the most of it. Call up some people, get the place all jazzed up. It's called Mario Party for a reason, because the word bullshit was already taken. But I might as well throw a party if I can't think of anything better to do. No, let's throw a party. A great party needs to have so many things. Mario Party 1, so you know people don't have too much fun. Doritos and Mountain Dew to have an outlet to discuss the war against arteries. Alcohol, because it's not a good party if you enjoy it sober. So I went to the party store and picked up anything and everything I could find that was party related. Now that's up to do is invite victims. They can bring alcohol, snacks, people. Okay, so who's gonna show up no matter what? No, no. Or, I did find this flyer for the Mario Party Assistance Agency, the MPAA. You can call them, pay a small fee, and have bodies show up to play Mario Party with. Which is really something Nintendo should have specified as required. I called? You called. According to my receipt, I have you for two hours to play Mario Party 1. Oh sh**, we're playing Mario Party? Just like any Mario Party player would. Uh, I've never played Mario Party before. What is that, like a bear? You've never played Mario Party? You're wearing a Wario hat. Oh. I thought the W stood for words. So you work at a Mario Party agency, but you never played it? I've been doing a lot of work for the agency. Haven't really had time to play. Okay, well, I need you to sit on the couch, hold the controller, and have fun. <laughs> That'll cost extra. Holy shit, you have a sitting fee? Technically, yes. Ambiguously, maybe. All right, we'll just have you stand. Want to take that for a test drive? Yeah, and see what I'm in for. I'll take it. Uh, it says on your sales form you ordered one other person. It's considered ordering people? Pretty sure that's illegal. So you're only pretty sure. Hey, is this the party? I know you said to bring Mountain Dew and Doritos. I like if I was Mellow Yellow and Cheez-Its. Yeah, you can't have a party without powdered sugar in a Ziploc. They did have beer at the store, so I just got 20 packs of cigarettes. Most of these are playing cards. They only have five packs of cigarettes available. So this is a suitable replacement for alcohol at a party? Yeah, I can't wait to get blackout cancer. Well, I for one am f***ing pissed. Come on, be an anti narc for once. We have to throw an actual party. You know what? No, I'm not going to go against my beliefs. What, do you want me to like, take out a pack of cigarettes, pull one out, puff it out? Put it out, light another one, off to get some cheap thrills while playing as the f man Wario? So how much is your nicotine fee? Ten dollars a year. <coughs> Don't worry. I'll take a second for your lungs to collapse. I can't wait, this is gonna be like an actual party! All we have to do is pick our soulmate! Well, you know what they say. Let's play Mario Party 1. Yeah, I'm taking Wario. Home field advantage. I'll pick Luigi for the sympathy vote. What consistency do you think Donkey Kong is? Hard. DK's Jungle Adventure, rated one star. Can't say I'm surprised. Anybody look at this and go, oh, I think he'd make great game boards. All right, which map do you guys want to play on? Keep in mind, I am 100% gone after that hit. That sounds like you need an intervention in Wario's Battle Canyon. That's not fair, it's home field advantage. Don't blame me for how I was born. Uh, how many turns should the game last? Is there an option for two? How about 54? Nope, there's only 20, 35, and 50. You sure there's not a secret menu? I say we go for 20. Don't want to come on too strong here. This is what I'm talking about! It's like a warrior taking remember the Alamo! You mean the Sabbath, right? Alright, we roll to decide the turn over here. Home field advantage! You got third. So the goal here is to traverse a game board, fill the traps and other obstacles, obtaining coins through landing on certain spaces and winning mini games that are played at the end of each turn to spend those on stars, which is what we want the most of overall. You've played this before? No, just look at that. It's pretty obvious. I thought this game was a bear. Oh, I think I've heard of this one. You've never heard of Mario Party 1, but you've heard of the Hammer Drop minigame in Mario Party 1? Oh, it's a big deal where I'm from. Where are you from? Wario's Battle Canyon. 
Take off that hat. No! No! Donkey Kong wins, as is tradition. This was the first mini game. And every mini game he's played, he's conquered. Well, looks like you're gonna be able to break that tradition here. You landed on a one-player mini game space. You get to play memory match. Oh, f I picked a bad day to get dementia. You gotta be kidding me. I swear it's the controller. What the hell? I got no coins? It makes it feel any better. My doctor told me I have nine days to live. The next minigame is Bumper Balls? That's one of my favorites! Again, still, you haven't played Mario Party 1 before, but you know about Bumper Balls? Word gets around. Star. Donkey Kong, you cheap bitch! What a waste of an ape! I have a star. This goes to saying they can steal coins from me for free! Well, you gonna do it? I have a pact to never steal unless stealing is free. What the hell? I have the least coins! But I don't wanna piss off Donkey Kong, you've seen what he's capable of. Yeah, winning. It'd be really funny if Donkey Kong won this minigame and landed on a star space and got a star. Less so funny, more so f***ing hysterical. Oh, I'm ready to use my thumbs. In fact, I've been using it this entire time. We gotta keep an eye on him. Why is this so slow? I, I'm barely getting anything. Feeling back takes forever. You know, I may have great thumbs, but I was blessed with the best palms. I won. I should do that. Okay, we're up to the Treasure Divers game. Oh, cool. Wario, f off. Oh, f yeah, dude. I'm going for the dub, bitches. I thought you were going for the dub, bitches. The dub stands for Wario, bitches. And I, I'd love that. That'd be like treating me like it's my birthday. When is your birthday? January 26th, 1997. Nine months after Arbor Day? That's a weird coincidence. Oh, it... It's no coincidence. I just got 20 coins. There's nothing left for me here. I have nine days left to live. I think that'll do it for now. Donkey Kong may have won, but so did Smallpox. For a while there. Yeah, I should probably check my contract with this agency. Make sure you're playing Mario Party 1's allowed. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever played Mario Party with a client. Usually they just want to hang out and enjoy life. Well, at least I'm happy that I finally got to throw a party for the first time, get lung cancer, and never use my hand again. All with professional Mario Party players. I think I'm an escort. Hey all, Scott here. Oh, don't worry. This one's my primary Wii U, and these are my Wii U's in case I get lasagna on this one. Some people might say, Scott, just buy a PC and get into PC gaming. Yeah, sure, when I learned the error of my ways. Well, Atari couldn't just look pathetic. They were Atari! Hey y'all, Scott here. I know what it looks like. I wasn't looking for a pumpkin. I was looking for grass. Oh, wow. Okay, fine. I couldn't take it anymore. Just yesterday, I was doing a live. I've had enough of this! And I decided to finally buy a pumpkin. Grass families live around here. Oh. Welcome to the Lessler Pumpkin Orchard, where pumpkins are a specialty, orchards a close second. Wow, vegan Terry Lessler running a non-permitted pumpkin patch. Can you name a more vegan crime? I've been a gourd user for a while, looking to make an upgrade. Never bought a pumpkin before. What are you carving during the fall, then? I'm mainly using watermelons. Well, we do offer conversion therapy. Nah, I think I'm good. I'll buy that one. I'll buy that one. That is a nice-ass pumpkin. Oh, uh, this? This is just a rental. Uh, no, I'm looking to own. You really think you're ready to go in raw and own a pumpkin? It's a lot of responsibility. Maybe you start with a goldfish or something. No, ever since I was a kid, I pledged that by the time I'm 17, I would own a pumpkin. I'm 23 now, and I've gotten nothing done over the past six years because this has been at the top of my to-do list. Let's get this over with. Perfect. We'll do a background check. You'll be the first you to own a pumpkin. Yes. I'll pick that one, the orange one. You want the two-year warranty? I hate the metric system. How many hours is that? Man, I run a pumpkin patch, not a clock. All right, just tell me when. That's good. All righty, so here's uh, gonna be your paperwork. Can I might be back. And your passport, mugshot, and watch, and you take care of that thing. 
Good stuff. You are currently looking at a registered pumpkin owner. Sure, I've dabbled in owning foam decoratory pumpkins in the past, but those I would just throw it after the season was over. These ones, completely different. This one's real. I asked if there was any pumpkin regulations in the county. I can't quarter it in a time of peace. I said I didn't want it after that, but I already took the cellophane off. My first real pumpkin. And to celebrate, I decided to invite all pumpkin users in the area, throw a bit of a pumpkin party. I hope that isn't slang. Terry should be happy to see how this pumpkin's doing, and plus four years from now, I'll be throwing my first party, so I think I'm ready to throw another one right now. I think I'm finally ready to present myself in front of the pumpkin demographic. Damn it. Okay, maybe I should make this more of a half pumpkin, half Halloween party. I don't want to make an ass out of myself in front of the pumpkin fandom, so I'll distract them by making it more of a Halloween party. All I have to do is come up with a scary costume. I have had this list for over four hours and have never acted upon it. See, I could go with somebody who's owned a pumpkin before. My cover will be blown. I could go with somebody who ate a fucking Wii. Maybe next year. Oh, wow, that's the scariest one. Uh, of course, I could also go as memory card talker, but I, I, I go as that year round. All right, I'm just gonna need some materials for this costume. Okay, customers also bought memory cards. I can go as two things. F it. Sure, in the game itself, they're distinct enough, but when you're writing down a password, you'll probably just use whatever your brain thinks would be funny. Why couldn't God make the O look like this? So to pick up where you left off in games, you either had to keep the game console running indefinitely, or something you have to explain to your parents. I don't want them thinking I play Mega Man 4. What is this? Uh, coordinates. For a bomb. Plus, what kind of passwords are these? Like, you try to get into a club and they ask, what's the password? C764... Oh, fuck. I thought you were another door. Am I the first to arrive? Yes. Well, just step outside, change into a scary costume, and you'll be fine. What are you, a meat eater? A person. Oh yeah, I can tell by the hat. Sometimes memory cards would come with games, like with Animal Crossing. You got a GameCube memory card free of charge. Made sense considering Animal Crossing required a ton of space to save. So you pretty much needed a memory card just for it. But hey, it's an Animal Crossing themed memory card, just like how I have an Animal Crossing themed thigh. I don't know, is it really worth neglecting your pumpkin for so long that it can save guys? I can't help but the pumpkin dies. All the beast food south for the winter. Pollination's over. Wait, this, this isn't the right pumpkin. Oh yeah, it's over there. Looking good, got any plans for this guy? I was thinking we could bop for apples, but with this instead. All right, you can feel free to stop not saying anything. Got a pumpkin. Oh God, we were supposed to bring pumpkins? I was hoping the invitation would be cryptic in a good way. Wait. Never mind. So what are you supposed to be? I was going for person, but everybody's going as that this year. Oh, come on! I thought I'd channel my inner Wendy's employee for my costume. You are a Wendy's employee. Is it really that convincing? What are you, a doorway pirate? No, I'm Dex. I thought he was depressed. Whoa there, I'm gonna need to see some fruit. How's this? No. This? Ugh. This? Language. This? Yeah, it's a fucking pumpkin party, get in! And what are you supposed to be? You. Whoa! No, not today, not today. That's not a pumpkin. <clears throat> when I saw the invitation, I thought the P said P, the U said I, the M said N, the P said E, the K said A. Listen, I don't want to hear any excuses. I'm fruit blind. Can't see fruit. That poor bastard. It just, you can't be here with that. I have a permit. But wouldn't you know, at least the PlayStation Portable kept the dream alive. Oh, oh, I thought it was a fingernail. And what do you guys say we pop some of these suckers in, get an insight to the previous owners? Wouldn't be a pumpkin without a background check. I always wanted to tour a pumpkin studio. It's f***ing freezing! These aren't pumpkins, are they? What was your first tell? I knew it, I knew it. Every time a pumpkin claims to save Geist data, it's always a scam. How can I let this happen twice? Right where we found these weren't pumpkins, I knew something was up. Yeah, guys. Let's get out of here! It's probably just a rat. Oh! Oh, not my leg day legs! I need them for leg days! Take off your costume. This is a room?
not hearing it. That pumpkin had a whole bean of pumpkin in front of it. You know how old she was in pumpkin years? Oh, that was a pumpkin? Thought she used a napkin. What's fruit blindness like? It's really funny. Until you have to identify fruit. That pumpkin had it coming! It couldn't even be a watermelon! You take that back. Should we take him to a hospital? No, he's already dead. And gotta say, first time owning a pumpkin, not impressed. Ah! Wait. He's just sitting there. Like a pumpkin? No. I'm not gonna let my weed get possessed by a pumpkin. Of all fruits, pumpkins need to be eaten, not enjoyed. Okay, you have them for two months out of the entire year, and then what? We're back to watermelons. No. Okay, I'm glad I got owning a pumpkin out of the way because it'll bump my credit score up. But for now, no. We need to end this, regardless of what body you possess. I ate the f***ing Wii. Hey all, Scott here. It's truly an awful situation when you re-experience something you initially loved, but upon further inspection, it's just not as good as you remember it being. I'm of course talking about Eczema. Tried it again, wasn't into it. Anyways, I'm gonna replay Mario 3D Land. I mean, hearing that they're making a new 3D Mario game and seeing these screenshots, it is one. They had these CGI animations representing the major Nintendo 3DS games they were about to go into detail about, and one of them was for Mario 3DS. Mario comes in, jumps around, and gets a power-up. I never cared for Mario, but I'm liking the new direction. This power-up ended up being the Tanuki Suit. Yay! PETA is the organization to listen to. They love animals so much, they would kill one to prove how serious they are. They saw Nintendo was releasing a new Mario game featuring an animal suit as a power-up and decided to go for the angle of this. They even made an online Flash game about it all. Well, now I gotta listen to them. Obviously, this was done as a way to get attention. If you were somebody going online to discuss how absolutely ridiculous it is that PETA thinks Nintendo's promoting animal abuse, congratulations, you did exactly what PETA wanted you to do. In Mario 3 had a frog suit, did anybody really think Nintendo was pressuring kids to think anything of that? Here's a gun, kill a frog. Starting up a new file, Super Mario 3D Land has a tree and a lot of it. I guess this is giving story context as to why there are now Tanuki leaves all over the place because that was my biggest concern when this game was announced. How is that Bowser's doing? It was a rainy night. It's like if I saw a fire. Oh, I know this exact arsonist. I can tell by his signature flames. Well, the 3D works pretty well in Mario 3D Land. It's just not that necessary. It does benefit you to leave it on, but I've played most of the game in 2D, no problem. May have missed a few jumps here and there, but I, I can always shrug it off. Oh my God, I said something wild, didn't I? I should shield my eyes from such statements. I didn't have sunglasses, so I spray painted my lenses black. Hey, all Scott here. I am not doing well. It's been a week since Daylight Savings Day. Worst holiday. I've changed my clocks. I'm still not used to it. I hate change. I've had the same feet for years, thank you. I don't want to change, and I'm going to stick to doing what I do best. Playing games that released in 2018 on the PS3. The next generation of gaming is upon us. It's time to upgrade. No! No! One of the most notorious examples, Donald Duck going quackers. God, the... Game. See, Twilight Princess was initially revealed as just a GameCube game, but as time went on, its completion date lined up perfectly with the launch of Nintendo's next home console. Uh-oh! So they decided to make Link right-handed in the Wii version. That was obviously done by just changing Link's model, right? Ah. It says no. It's just odd seeing some games go the cross-gen route, like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Could a game like this run on the 360? No, oh, no problem. Look at these clouds. You should buy it because there are meaningful experiences to have on there. If the games on that platform are already available on the platform you already have, you don't need the new console. But Sackboy has a five on the box now. I said don't buy the console, you can buy the games. Hey all, Scott here. Big day if you don't have much going on. Microsoft and Sony have decided out of the kindness of their hearts, they are releasing video game consoles. You heard it here third, video game consoles, that's video game consoles with a G in there somewhere, are launching to success, is what I'd say if you could actually buy them. Let's go to our Scott on the field. Scott? Scott, it's launch day of the brand new consoles, or as some video game fans have coined it, today. It's a big deal, taking into consideration all the video game console players out there, roughly 3% of the population cares. Many fans have expressed disdain in the limited supply of consoles, you can barely find any in store. Sky, that's pretty crazy. Did you nab any of the consoles? No. Okay. Uh, also, there's a tornado warning tonight. More on that tomorrow. Well, I did go to Best Buy, and they did have some of the new Xboxes left over, and... The names of these are getting so bad. I swear they named the last one this. That new generation smell is what makes console launches so great. The launch itself... Could be better. I remember when the Nintendo Switch launched. Look at me. 
Brown hair and glasses. I was just a kid. I got the gray model. Of course, when unboxing a concept for the first time at launch, you say one of two things. It's way it's smaller bigger than, than I, I thought, thought it would be. be. Then it's time for the setup, getting to know your new console, experiencing the new sound effects and user interface. I can't wait. This is going to be amazing. Boom. Yes. I spent $300 to have my TV display this image. If only my switch was defective. Now it's a console launch. Of course, there was also the great Nintendo Switch cartridge tasting phenomenon. Somebody discovered that each of these game cards had an incredibly better taste to them. Well, that's one point against the Switch. The PS4 was great with this stuff. It's fine. I don't know how this even became a thing people started doing. Like, yeah, it tastes bad. A bitter coating is here to probably prevent people from putting them in their mouths and swallowing. But is there any standard to how a cartridge should taste? Oh, the, the, the DS cards. See, those taste okay. Do you ever have that fear? You just got this expensive thing you really wanted, and on the way from the store to the parking lot, you're worried that somebody's gonna steal it from you, or you're gonna drop the box and it's gonna break? That happened to me. Oh. Aww. So why do I not give a shit about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? Because I couldn't pre-order them! I wanted them, honest to God, but I was busy thinking about what it would be like to own them. Damn it! Hey y'all, Scott here. What are we sending today? I am pretty hungry. Lost. I actually get more into eating food. I heard people love that stuff. The issue is... I don't know how to cook. And that's a problem with Thanksgiving around the corner. What am I gonna do if I can't cook? Be thankful? Thankfully, I have an escape route. There happens to be a Nintendo DS game that has all the answers. doing here? This isn't personal trainer math. This is a game. See, 100 classic books doesn't have an age rating because they're books, old, unedited, public domain classics like Huck Finn. Personal trainer cooking is basically just a cookbook, but it has alcohol references, so it's rated E for everyone. So overall, 100 classic books is more appropriate for all ages. You ever actually read Huck Finn? Before we go any further, please adjust my voice to the speed you like. Let's slow down there. Is this a good speed for you? I have very slow ears. You can exclude certain ingredients based on dietary restrictions, which is pretty handy. According to my religion, stomach, and opinion, I can't eat food, so it's good I can exclude certain recipes. But what do I want to prepare here? New England clam chowder? F*** it, that's kind of funny. Okay, select a saucepan of an appropriate size for the number of servings you will be preparing. All I had was a milk jug. Okay, so here's all the ingredients I'm gonna need. Lucky for me, I already own food. I don't need to buy ingredients. Sure, I only have two of the listed ingredients, but I can make this work. First up, canned clams. And two thirds of a small onion. Thank God that's the only portion I had. Drain the clams with the sieve. The sieve was never on the ingredients. Can I substitute it with clams? Let's cut the onion, clean up cutting utensil, substitute carrots with clams, potatoes with clams, bacon with clams, and now it's time to cook. I didn't mean to get salmonella this year. Might as well try another one. Oh, f they got goulash in this? God damn it, it uses onions. I already used my whole two thirds onion already. Well, you know what they say if you can't make goulash, give up. But they got a mac and cheese recipe here. That's my favorite side dish at any Thanksgiving. Next to pretzels. I have to try though. Chop the cheddar, boil the macaroni. I realized I was using a saucepan and sieve as a cup holder, so lucky break there. Make the sauce, don't let it brown. Is green okay? Season with salt and pepper, mix everything together. Uh, I don't have macaroni noodles, so I'm just gonna use thick spaghetti. Voila, macaroni and cheese, Ohioan style. Oh boy, food and plates? Oh yeah, I haven't eaten all of the month of November to prepare for this. Happy Thanksgiving! What is this? It's a gourd, bitch. What's in the crock pot? Cereal. You know what? I think I might go out for Thanksgiving this year. There's this new place downtown called Steel Pretzels. Oh, what do they have? I don't know. Guys, I busted my ass making all of this. The least you can do is eat everything. Which is why I will give this infamous excuse for poor video game performance towards my cooking ability. Why did my meals turn out bad? It was the controller, not me! Hey all Scott here. Why didn't you tell me about pencils? This is great. Consider me a newborn fan. I'm sold. I don't even have to think about the next pencil I buy because I already pre-bought all of them. 
I should have waited for reviews. Most video games are mass produced. You're not gonna have a hard time finding new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe on launch day. So if you pre-ordered it, get over there. If that game wasn't available at Best Buy at launch, the simulation's crumbling. Now I wanted the game really bad, so I spent all my money on it at the GameStop I was at. And thus I had to then figure out how to cancel my pre-order at the GameStop I pre-ordered at. Hey, don't blame me. I was young and dumb. It was 2018. You know, I should have just paid for the pre-order in full after buying the game at the other GameStop, so then I wouldn't have been embarrassed in the slightest. I wouldn't have had to walk away from the one without a game and wouldn't have had to cancel my pre-order at the other. I know what you're saying. No man should own that many copies of Wii Sports Resort. So two? Well, who wants to tell a cashier, hi, I pre-ordered Go Vacation. Wow, you really care, don't you? So why did I pre-order Assassin's Creed 4? I needed a new football. Yeah, I passed and pre-ordered on Amazon. Uh, guess when I got it. After the shipping delay, right now. Ooh, sorry, no more pre-orders for that though. If you want, we have plenty of Little Big Planet 3 pre-orders left. Okay. Good thing you didn't have to specifically pre-order to buy them. Uh, they were selling them separately at the store as well. Thank God I was out of cups. Jesus, how, how did they f up a Rubik's Cube? But to be fair, this is the best pre-order bonus I've gotten so far. In terms of excitement, I'm brimming. Free condoms with infamous second son at GameStop Italy. They'll work or your money back. But I have time to kill, so I'm gonna pre-order a pre-order of a game. That's where I get to stand in line to find out where I'll stand in line when it comes to pre-ordering the game, because I'll get this pre-order bonus of this exclusive poster. Yeah, I'll take the cigarettes. Extra nicotine, yeah. Hold the tobacco, thanks. Hey y'all, Scott here. I'm trying new things, broadening my horizons. I'll try cancer, why not? You only live once. You're looking at a new Scott here that hey y'all, so why not celebrate by playing something I've never played before? The holidays are almost here, this season where new games, systems, and experiences are abundant. Everywhere you look, there's something new to play, and not only that, but so many games released throughout the year I missed are crazy cheap. There's really no excuse right now not to play what this year had to offer. Fuck you, I'm playing Wii Chess. As your patented young Nintendo fan that grew up with a GameCube, so does his opinion really matter? I was a big fan of this game, and I was also a big fan of lying. Look at that, three-year-olds can't play chess in America, which means this must have been a European exclusive. So Europe usually gets a raw deal when it comes to games. Some of the greatest games of all time initially never released in Europe. Some of. I think more people wrongfully assume this game is a part of the Wii series, when there's a Wii series game they didn't even know existed. Yeah, don't look at me like I don't own Wii Chess. You use the D-pad to move your pieces in Wii Chess. Oh man, I can't wait till Wii Chess comes out in the States and I can use the Wii Remote's pointer! Should've gotten into fishing instead. I can barely find any advertisements for this game out there. I wouldn't blame anybody for not knowing it exists. Well, here's your warning. Hey, f***er, you like chess? Yeah, and I hate pointing. Introducing Wii Chess, finally. Chess you can't feel. Wanna play chess and nothing else? Yeah, what does it look like? I like pointing? Introducing Wii Chess, the only chess game on Wii called Wii Chess. Featuring a pre-existing engine and acting like it's a major feature when in reality using a pre-existing engine is a lot easier than making a brand new one from scratch and acting like it's a big feature on the back of the box. F pointing. Introducing Wii Chess, it's perfect if you wanna try new things. Hey all Scott here. It is laundry season. Seems like everybody's cleaning the clothes these days. I'm not one to go against trends. I'll do it. <coughs> okay, I did clean my pencils out with this, so it might not be ideal for the gears. Well, while I wait for that to heal up, why not tell a story to pass the time? This is the story of a brown-haired white boy with glasses. Guess who? And one day, he decided to talk about video game delays. I want to hear some useless sh but as somebody who watches the video game industry like a hawk, I can sense things. My five senses are at dangerous levels. You ever see me taste lemonade? <laughs> Take, for example, Mighty Number no. 9. No! I think it's ready. Might as well test it out by cleaning some forks. Well, after numerous delays, I've decided to cancel the laundry, but don't you worry. I think everything will work out just fine for our brown-haired white friend. Game delays are inevitable for all developers, and most of the time, I think they're highly respectable. It takes guts to admit, hey, we need more time. And sure, some are annoying, most are definitely disappointing, but in the end, I think most delays are for the best. It's not like real life or pushing something off till later will get you in deep trouble. Huh. Hey all Scott here. It is laundry season. Seems like everybody's cleaning the clothes these days. Hey all Scott here- oh! I feel like space chips. No! 
feel pretty good about this. This is shovelware. <laughs> Walmart thinks, oh, we're out of milk. Fill the space with Chicken Shoot. To think of all the Chicken Slaughter games on Wii. I already played Chicken Shoot. You wouldn't know it because I'm not dead, damn it. So let's try out another in the genre. Chicken Blaster by Zoo. Well, what sets Chicken Blaster apart from the rest of the genre? Eh, like five letters. Wow, it's so realistic. It truly feels like I'm gutting a fucking duck. When we blast the chickens, do they die or are they just fainting? Uh, no, it is canonical. These chickens are being slaughtered. Play the role of a chicken farmer whose birds have gone haywire and saved the farm from shooting these mad chickens. I mean, they know what a man wants. I may hate chickens, but I'm a big supporter of the pheasant movement. I just want people to take them seriously, you know? Well, they aren't a fad. This is Pheasant's Forever Wing Shooter, featuring pheasant, quail, duck, turkey, and grouse. Grouse? They got the whole band back together. Apparently, Pheasant's Forever is an organization alongside Quail Forever, promoting the conservation of the birds. So let's kill them. Well, that's the most surprising thing I've seen all day. All right, pick a location. Well, this bottom one has dark matter all over the place, and I also never trust a man named Owen Field. I'll just go with the first course. We get fun facts on the loading screen. Treat every gun as if it were loaded. This is fun as sh Illegal? If anybody sees these birds in their neighborhood, run. The way it was big on bird hate, here I have ultimate duck hunting. Hunting and retrieving ducks. Yeah. 70% of this cover it isn't a duck, though. And what are you shooting at? The duck's right there. Just step on it. God, I want to kill that duck. I'm not gonna say anything. If I was a shitty opening cutscene to a hunting game, I wouldn't want to be made fun of. You know what? I don't even want to bother. The lack of grouse is really bugging me. How about we try ultimate duck hunting? Yeah, I accidentally bought this game twice. Apparently this game got reprinted by Zoo with new art. At least this box is more duck hunting related, but again, man, the duck's right there. Just spit on it. Oh, and I got time and a lust for blood. North American hunting extravaganza. Yes, hunting extravaganza. This is a f***ing party! Calvin Tucker's Redneck Farm Animals Racing Tournament. The F-A-R-T, huh? Now that's funny. Get your redneck on. Calvin Tucker's Redneck Colon Farm Animal Racing Tournament is a wacky cart game with loads of typical redneck humor. Forza was missing something. Their crazy organized tournaments bring them from the farm to the tropical pirate island, from the polar to Egypt, and from inside the pyramid, they are warped into time to the medieval times and returning by UFO back in time again. You ever need a cigarette after reading a paragraph? It's not even a paragraph. That final bit was one whole sentence. What does the manual say? Well, we have a solid recap of the story. Apparently all the farm animals want more out of life than just a farm, so they start up a racing tournament. Billy Pete, slimy Billy the Frog, in quotes. Billy Barry, the silent but the cool Billy Cool with his sunglasses, decides to join for reasons only the mystical Billy Cool knows. And of course, crazy cat Billy Slick decides to join the party because otherwise there is no one left at the farm for him to harass or oppress. Right, what's your character's special ability? Oppression. I think these are the only two Calvin Tucker games, so can't wait for the next one. Calvin Tucker and the f Busters. Dave Mira BMX Challenge. What is he, in space? You know, IGN gave this game a two. It's at least a four. Time to increase my monster energy drink gauge to do something. I never filled it. I assume by doing tricks, you boost your meter up, but that's not how I play Dave Mirror BMX Challenge. I feel more reserved by failing. That's funny. I do have the urge to drink a monster now, though. The store was fresh out. I subbed it out with kerosene. The people who played Dave Mira BMX Challenge wear Carhartt jackets in April and spent way too long in high school bathrooms. Pizza delivery boy. Let's get into this story. Oh, that's where my wallpaper came from. What's your party name? I hate how these games are getting so political. Play a minigame. Here's a 40 second long loading screen. Here's our next minigame. It's still better than Pirates. Guess what Neighborhood Games is? No thinking, just guess. Do it. No thoughts, first instinct. What do you think? Neighborhood Games? Do it. Do it. What is it? Uh, uh Where's the deer drive? Damn it! Look at that, it has the same startup screen as Pheasants Forever, except it's a dragon, not a pheasant. Oui, oui, que sur le grand tourneur medieval. I can't speak Spanish, so you know I don't know if that's French or not. I don't think I can ever trust a man like I once did. 
So I'm removing my shower curtain. There's nowhere to hide when you're in this apartment. This looks like it could be a quality game where your main weapon is projectile vomiting. I'm surprised the Z button doesn't sh your pants. I am pretty proud of my pants shitting scheme. If I get pulled over for speeding, I just go, Officer, I just shit my pants. What is it gonna do? Write you a ticket with sh in your pants? Spray isn't very good. Escape the museum. This really hits home. I gotta get out of here! This is a point and click adventure, of course, with a Majesco logo in the corner. I think it's fair to have some doubts. I've already taken a look at two other M&M's games, so let's round it out with a full-blown adventure. This is an M&M. Oh, wow, what can it do? Oh, do I have a game to show you? Mmm, Adventure is a full-blown 3D platformer starring these little flavor seizures. This game is for those who just love the M&M's characters, your friend who just won't shut the f*** up about them. What kind of M&M's pointer is that? The M's too big. And why are all the titles so high up? All right, so let's start a new game. Uh, thoughts so far? I love it. So yellow M&M's in a locker, uh, he shuts it. Look at this. What is this? So I have to do some security thing. A yellow is really digging shit here. Never mind. All right, time to play. Well, it's not good. I'll give them that. I mean, if you really just fucking love the M&M's characters and you want to see what they're like when they walk, I'm sure I get it. We all have dreams. It's definitely one of the better games of the lot. But I should probably wait until I play Space Chimps to judge any game from this point forward. Hey y'all, Scott here. You know you're happy when you have 200 NES games to cry to. I don't need companionship. I've been a human being for 21 years. Why would a 23 year old need another human in their life? It's a one man job being alive. I don't need two. Of course, in terms of life goals, I'd love to be an uncle. Problem is, I'm an only child. So the only way I can do that is by marrying somebody with a nephew. That's how they get you. Well, it's not like I have trouble doing anything like that. I'm more of a recreational virgin anyways. I can get married whenever I want. Watch. 911, what's your emergency? Please, f me. Thank you all for coming. When I heard you couldn't get laid, I dropped everything and came straight here. Well, I couldn't imagine anybody else being a part of the f Scott task force. Yeah, I interpreted that in a different way. I just need help conquering virginity. I haven't messaged any girls on Tinder and I haven't gotten any responses yet. You're not getting any responses on Tinder? If you try to tell them how badly you want to f them? So speed dating? Count me in. Who the hell are you? Oh, you know my brother. He worked at Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh, the Wendy's employee. How's he doing? Oh yeah, not too good. He's been dead the past month. What the hell? He didn't tell us. Well, maybe we can speed date in honor of him. Really get the dead on our side. Yeah, I'll give him a call. See if he's open to it. Yeah, we'll hand out some coupons. Get the whole town to speed date. Yeah, I think my parents are free. He's not picking up. And remember, girls really like it when you tell them how desperate and lonely you are. And you gotta get really mad if they don't wanna f*** you. Listen, before people start showing up, we should probably get you some practice. Like a driving range? Yeah, but without the flirting. Alright, let's sit down. Anyone on my side will be a girl, anyone on this side will be... We'll be horny, got it. Well, to show you a little about myself, here's a picture of me and my mom. Aw, which one's you? You got your dental records on you? Yeah. Impressive. Most dating is toothpaste these days. Just how it is. Well, people are really shallow. Consider it a background check. For example, do you have a death certificate? Mm, sorry, not yet. Good! I'm not f***ing a ghost again. Alright, I got seven words for you. I will f*** anything with a face. Me? Uh, I can't keep this up! I don't have sex! The world doesn't need it! I have to get laid. I think it'll bump up my credit score. If you get laid, who else is not gonna get laid? You! You hate sex! Hi, right, John Female, woman on the prowl. Rex Mose, school dance historian and chaperone. Wow, you chaperone school dances? That's so cool. I wish somebody could chaperone the whole city. Damn, you hate sex too? What the fuck? Ah, you like sitting at tables too? It is table season. The moment I saw you, I was like, wow. What I would give to see her at a table. So all I am is a table user to you. With teeth. So, I hear you have a dead brother. Is it really that noticeable? Wow, you're so dreamy. You have those I have a dead brother lips. It is dead brother season. So, you single? My girlfriend drove you here. So that dead brother of yours. See, uh, related to you? Yep, death does run in the family. Nope, nah. I don't mingle with people who associate with the dead. Learn to be alive for once. Are you bleeding? Yes, let's discuss. I don't want any bleeders. Vegan? Okay, what am I gonna do with all my blood? Why is the blood yellow? Yeah, I'm colorblind. Hi, geriatrics. Here's my sexual history. Wouldn't any of your past partners be okay with me calling them about your performance? I don't see why not. I was always trustworthy, I never missed a day, and I came on time every morning. Wait a minute, this is your job resume. No, it's not! The last girl I was with was named Walgreens. Big deal! I gotta be honest with you, you don't look like your pictures. Sorry, I was shot on the way here. I think this is gearing me up for real life girls! You're learning from the best. We know what girls want.
air. Yeah, you're nearing passable levels of speed dating. Oh, what? I'm not good enough yet? Replace not with really not and you'll be closer. You did bleed all over me. Hey, is this the place? Not now! I'm now certified. What are you doing? The funeral home's that way. We're not going to a funeral. I knew that was the only way to get you in the car. What the hell? I bought new shorts for that. You've been going down a bad path lately. How lately? About the past 23 years, give or take. I can't help what I did as a fetus. I'm sorry. You took me from my apartment just to drive me back to my apartment. Breaking and entering isn't as fun if you know what's happening. I'm not an alcoholic. Your file says otherwise. Listen, you're an alright guy. Damn near human. We just want to fix you. I would have to be mentally broken or not already castrated for you to do that. I'm good. Oh, alright. How about you just open your Christmas present from this year? Oh boy, I hope it's a snake. What the fuck? Somebody shut him up with some duct tape. On it. RPG guy. I thought that was my race. Nope, my bad. Got him mixed up. Hey, good news. We're not getting charged with kidnapping. I just got off the phone with the government, and we're on good terms. Oh, tell them I said hi. Uh, Scott's roommate of nine months. I think that makes sense. You're not my roommate. I thought you knew. <laughs> uh, I don't know what RPGs are. <laughs> I think you're being a little bitch about them. Yeah, what are RPGs again? I don't know, a gun? Do I at least have a chance to explain myself? This is America, so no! This isn't America, this is Ohio! It all started 23 years ago, the doctor said. It's not an RPG fan. Contrary to popular belief, I didn't always play video games, which is why there are no records of me prior to 03. This was the year I truly started playing video games, so pretty much the year I was truly born, which you know what that means. I'm a minor. Around this time was when I discovered the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was hooked up at my grandma's house in the den area. I remember distinctly a goldfish cracker was lodged in the cartridge slot. Yeah, try it, it works. This was my cousin's old system, and he left it there alongside a shoebox full of games. These are human teeth. Hopefully, this gave you a good idea as to what I was raised on, what games and consoles made me who I am today. Notice how Lufia 2 wasn't mentioned? As your therapist, I think it should be open to more things, like RPGs and murder. I've tried RPGs. And I've tried murder. It doesn't count till you like it. So what are RPGs again? Isn't it a political party in Guinea? Why are you so hell-bent on me being an RPG guy? You don't even know what RPGs are. Yeah, I do. Political party in Guinea. We've been over this. I always thought it was like a BLT, but for ranch peas and grapes. Why did you all give me Xenoblade? Well, that's an RPG. I didn't even know Xenoblade was pronounced like that. I thought we got you an enema. Yeah, I was wondering why you didn't shove this up your ass. No! That doesn't mean I'm opposed to other genres. I love puzzle games for a lot of the same reasons. Rhythm games can be incredibly satisfying and addictive. Adventure games are a dream to get completely submerged in. Shooters I'm awful at, but they can be a blast. Get to the f***ing Xeno s***! 
I don't like RPGs. Now, what is an RPG? Why would you ask me? Role-playing games are games where the player controls the actions of a character and slash or several party members immersed in some well-defined world. Oh, so what does that make me? An abuser. So what's the big deal? I love fantasy, put down three letters, I'm sold. Yeah, seems to me you don't have much of an argument here. Like Stalin? Stalin f***ing hated RPGs, but loved Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we're, I'm we're, into we're, it. We're on the same page. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. So, it just, yeah. it makes sense. But, absolutely. I get it. But, I get good it now. Point. Good point. Better point. Yeah. Better point. Yeah. Better point. Yeah. 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 It's not Flint Smash Geist or Burnout Crash, not Mario Party 6 or Ultra Smash, neither Clubhouse Games or Wii Fit Plus, nor Family Feud on SNES. All the games I play, whether good or bad, have tropes in common, my favorite deep dads. They may be rushed or plain or flawed, but they ain't RPGs, oh thank god. Are my tastes just bad? Am I the one to blame? Or is it RPGs that are dumb and lame? No! Why don't you play them? They just take so damn long to complete Why don't you play them? 60 hours just to rinse and repeat But you could grind for years just to feed that bus Why waste all this time on just one game? Why don't you play them? I just don't like them! I just wanna play stupid Nintendo games! They aren't this stupid! Why don't I like them? Okay! Turn-based battles in too much text I'd rather be out not having sex Menu clutter and useless stats And random encounters can kiss my ass No gameplay till hours in Combat ready? How did I win? The same thing happens over again And that their fun part comes up when? I missed one thing and now I'm lost That one inch of text really meant a lot There's some shop with items I can't afford So grab for money, you won't be bored I'm tired, I'm scared, I'm not having fun There's no other way this can be spun What do I do? What do I check? It's an RPG, what did I expect? Listen guys, you can have a pin Why don't you play the You're not my style? Why don't you why don't you why, why don't you Number two, wait your turn, fker! Well, I'm walking around enjoying myself thinking, what's next? Homicide. Here is a list of things I can do. I can attack. I usually perform some special ability like existence. Well that didn't do a damn thing. Or just give up. Run. Bitch out, they don't care. So I select what I want to do, I watch the character do what I told them to do, uh, then it's the enemy's turn, because it's only fair. They attack, thanks, and now we're back to me. Uh, I'll probably attack again. Actually, it might be a good time to heal myself with some medicine. Uh, good, I brought Dayquil. Uh, all right, and it's their turn again. They attack, and now we're back to me again, all right. Thought I'd uh, adjust my speech here. Scott, the lack of RPGs you play is horrifying, and I've seen bees. Oh, he means it. To show how much we care, I have a surprise witness. At an intervention? I present to you K Swiss of Bankruptcy Patrol. Oh my god, you got a white guy? We call this issue the Scottless Economy. With you actually playing RPGs, we call it an economy. You son of a bitch, I love the economy! I feel like you're really blocking yourself from experiences that will truly better your life and outlook on art as a whole. I wrote this when I thought we were still talking about guns. Okay, what do you think about role playing games? Oh, just don't be a bitch. It is your place. <laughs> yeah, I got a RPG delivery. Jeb, yeah, why didn't you come earlier? Oh, I work today. I love the economy. <laughs> oh, yeah! 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 Woo! Oh, yeah! Woo! Woo! Oh, I deliver RPGs to Avis Youth. So they're up to be RPG guys. Here. This, this is Madden. Yeah. No! No! second room here. What are you all RPGs too? RPGs can be fucking anything. I was talking to someone and they fucking catfished me. Leap year this year. It's December. Oh, food's here. What is this? They're ribs. I thought we were getting a corn dog. These are nature's corn dogs. I can't eat ribs. I'm not hungry. And vegan. Oh, come on, somebody has to. I ordered the economy size. Yeah, is this uh, stale pretzels? I'd like to place an order. 
Yeah, the stale pretzels. Oh, oh, get some ribs. No, it's stale pretzels. All they have are stale pretzels. No, if you ask, they'll make it for you. Yeah, I'll do a side of pretzels. It's kind of a weird way to say ribs. My God, is this how we sounded to him? Depends on how he pronounces ribs. You know, we should we should do something nice for him. I'd like to place a fling smash order. What do I want? Ribs. Ribs. Yeah, I'll go with fling smash this time. Christ, it's been a busy day for us. Two deliveries? This economy's about to be the f***ing best. So I thought you just delivered RPGs. Well, RPG can mean a lot of different things. For example, like when you're really playing Gex. Hey, kid, you want a Gex? No, no, no. I have to pay for it. God, I want to f*** the economy. I think I've become an RPG guy! And I f***ing hate myself! What am I? What have I become? I don't even use one of these! Ah! Oh! Hello, my name is God. Oh my God, I meet Jesus and a Target employee in the same week? I just wanted to give you a formal warning on your recent performance as a human. You're really f***ing it. I don't want to f*** anything, what did I do wrong? First off, that time you drank that water and made a face, f*** you. I make water. Second off, you're trying to be an RPG guy. I thought that's what everybody wanted. See, I crafted humanity to have the instinctive trait to not like RPGs. So that's why cavemen never played them. Then all of a sudden, evolution was like, f*** you, here's Ogre Battle 64, person of lordly caliber, the famous game that everybody loves, and ever since we've had a bunch of mutants walking around playing RPGs. So it's normal to not like RPGs? It's normal to not like all kinds of things, whether it's RPGs or murder. You never would have known. Scott, Bubby, you know who you are and what you like and don't like. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not an RPG guy. You know this deep down, but that doesn't mean you should immediately denounce every RPG that you come across. Even though RPGs were never meant to be enjoyed, people liked them for some reason. You should respect and understand that as much as they should respect and understand you. But even if you generally don't like something, giving it a try from time to time can open your eyes to great experiences you would have never had otherwise. Can I add you on LinkedIn? I think I get it. I'm not an RPG guy! And sharks are just sexy fish at the end of the day. RPGs are my go-to genre, and that's okay, just like how everybody doesn't like platformers or sports games or first-person shooters or party games. My criticisms of RPGs were just opinions. They're the same reasons why people love RPGs, and that's okay! But that doesn't mean I can never like RPGs. I really like Dragon Quest and some Final Fantasy games I like, and I'm just really happy that Xenoblade's doing well, and Persona 5 is really cool. No, I'm going too far. This. 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 This, 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 this. Hey all, Scott here. I'm not an RPG guy and I'm proud of who I am. No RPG is ever gonna make me anything otherwise.